Check, 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 check. Check one, two. All right. Let's get it going. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the gym. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully, you are having a most wonderful day. We got all of the cards from Crimson Haze, the, up, the upcoming Japanese Pokemon TCG set, which is coming out in, what, like a week or two? That's pretty, that's pretty crazy. It's like... Uh, coming out shortly this is going to be a part of our twilight masquerade sets and we're getting uh we're kind of getting this uh near simultaneous release which is fun um you know japan's release schedule is more frequent than ours uh they release sets every i want to say like every six weeks it seems like which freaking rules but we don't do that internationally anymore. We used to. We used to. We used to. I don't know. We used to have smaller sets that were the same as the Japanese sets. You know, base set, jungle, fossil, team rocket. All right. Those those sets are like one-to-one -one with the Japanese sets. But I guess it was because we were just catching up to Japan or like, I don't know, something like that. But anyways, we don't get sets every six weeks. We get sets every three months. But... Uh, the Twilight Masquerade set is actually coming out like sooner than every three months because I think this set came out relatively late. Uh, Temporal Forces, relatively late um, in the grand scheme of things. And then uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying. Anyways. And then we got Twilight Masquerade coming out, like, what, soon? All right, let's see. Twilight. Masquerade. Release. May 24th. That's in, like, two months from now. Which is fun. Because Temporal Forces, um, you know, is not even out yet. I mean, it, it officially releases, like... I guess stores can start officially selling um, Temporal Forces products like this Monday, right? So like Monday the 18th, stores can officially start selling it. So that's like, that's just over two months away, which means that we'll start getting our pre-releases two weeks before this, which means like May 10th, right? Ish. So... Co-19 says, is Temporal Forces both the ancient and future Japanese sets put together? Yes. Is it all clicking for you now? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. So Japan gets, Japan usually gets like two to three sets in the span of time that we get one set. And then we just like combo them all together. That's what the Pokemon Company International does. They take like you know, Japan's two or three sets, combo them into one set. Two or three sets, combo them into one set. That's what happens, right? In Japan, a uh, very frequent release schedule. They get them like every six weeks or so. Um, but they're smaller sets. All 66 main set cards revealed. 66 cards? Right. Our sets are like 300. Usually, it'll be a three-setter if there's, like, a special set that gets, like, kind of shoved in, you know? Like a smaller special. Usually, it's a combo of two sets, yeah. A three-setter, yeah, those end up being, like, the insane, massively bloated sets that just seemingly have infinite cards in them. Okay. <laughs> But yes, we've got all 66 cards from Crimson Haze. Crimson Haze comes out um, at the end of the month, which is hype. And what was cool, so like this is something that was cool, right? Because part of what, um, you know, I, I think that one of the issues with the way that the release goes with the Pokemon TCG, one of the issues with it right now um, 
has been that like everything that the Pokemon Company internationally is release, you know, international is releasing, always kind of felt like old news, right? I mean, like traditionally, I'm talking about for the last 10 years, everything that the Pokemon Company International was ever trying to promote felt like old news because Japan already had it, right? And at some points, like Japan had had the cards we were releasing for, for like months already, right? So it was literally old news. Thank you, T. Fleed, and thank you, Chicken Strip, for the sub. Kick off the stream as well. And Mo Bowden for that sub yesterday. Um, but something that was fun is that, you know, recently we've been getting more, you know, kind of simultaneous reveals between the Pokemon Company Japan and the Pokemon Company International, and we got that with Twilight Masquerade, which is sick, right? Like, that's cool, that's cool. I love it when mom and dad communicate about stuff, don't you? Don't you just love it when mom and dad work together? Man, feels great. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, yes, we had the Pokemon Company Japan and the Pokemon Company International pretty much revealing these new cards from Twilight Masquerade at the same time, which still feels very fun and novel and, and you know, exciting because, you know, as someone who's been playing the Pokemon TCG for over a decade, like that, that is not the way they've always done things. Like, no, usually it's like, we're, we're late to the party, just perpetually late to the party, always. But lately, um, it seems like that Japan will get one set before we do. And then, you know, by the time Japan gets the second set for, for a release, like we'll release it at the same time, right? So... That's kind of cool, or or close to that. We, I think, the closest we came to that is uh, what the closest we came to that was Paradox Rift, right? Like, I think the cards for Paradox Rift were literally releasing in Japan and internationally at at the same time, right? Yeah, and, and Paradox Rift was three sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew we'd been getting something because you got Raging Surf, Ancient Roar, and Future Flash. Right, and Raging Surf was like that kind of like off, you know, strange kind of singleton set that just kind of got whopped into there, right? So. Yeah. Guildmaster says, uh, since I don't follow TCG news, I don't feel that way. More cards makes my brain go wee. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy for you, Guildmaster. That's sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For Paradox Rift, so Paradox, the Paradox Rift release was like really exciting because our pre-release started at like the same time um started at like the same time that uh that the set was releasing in Japan. I guess that's not exactly what's going on here because Twilight Masquerade doesn't come out till May and this mask set comes out in like a week in Japan, right? Doesn't it come out like next week? So No, that's Crimson Haze. Man, I'm tripping. No, it comes out in April. All right, so it is going to be pretty close to a simultaneous release. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Cool, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm tripping. All right, yes. So we're getting pretty close to a simultaneous release, which is exciting, which is the whole thing that I was talking about. Yes, excellent. And we got to see some of these cards revealed in this sweet reveal trailer. Right, Twilight Masquerade, boom. It's pretty cool 
Cons considering temporal forces isn't like on shelves yet, it's pretty cool that we're getting this, right? So, that's fun. They can't do it with every set. They can't. I mean, look at temporal forces. There was temporal forces just released late. You know, it did. It just released late, and you know, Japan had both of those sets that are in temporal forces for like. When did those come out in Japan? I mean, like months ago, right? A couple months ago. See, I just did my opening, like... I guess like a month and a half ago, probably. So. Interesting, nonetheless. Anyways, we've got a lot of really exciting stuff going on. I should be placing an order for some uh, Crimson Haze cards um in the next week or so and we'll be able to open those on stream so we'll be opening crimson haze cards you know in a week or two so that's pretty dope so we got that on the agenda and i think that there's a lot of really cool cards coming up so we got a lot to talk about today let's get to it before we get started real quick uh, I'll talk about Gym Leader Challenge last night. I played my fire deck. It didn't go great. Um, but I did finish two and two. Granted, one of those was a scoop from Craig because he had to leave because there was a tornado warning. So, um, yeah. He had to leave to go be with his significant other. So, uh, two and two with an asterisk. But I finished fourth place. It was a very low attended night. We only had ten players, so. Um, I didn't have it anyways, though. No, no, Craig beat me and then scooped me. But JD won with fire. So, yeah. I had some, and, and you know, and I hate to, I hate to, I think at a certain point I have to, like, I have to look at what I'm doing with fire and maybe switch it up. Though I really like the concept of it. I popped off against Jack round one and it went really well. But then, like, in rounds two and three against Craig and then against JD, I went first and had just terrible setups, right? Like very slow, abysmal setups. I barely got going. And then in game three, I played against water and just got smacked with a turn two attack. Like I played against water and I won the flip and I chose to go second, but I didn't open a supporter in my hand and Alex got a turn two attack going first. So it was just like, yeah, I just got spanked, you know? I just got spanked. And it's like, and I, and I think my list is pretty good, actually. It's cool. The potential of it's very high. Um, so it's kind of like this, uh, like I know there's some things, like I lost the flip, went, went first, and then didn't like, didn't set up right, right? In games two and three. But both of those games, I felt like I could have won if I set up the way I set up against Jack in round one. Uh, and I set up really well against Jack around one, and yeah. So like, the potential's there. The high end, the high end potential of my list is there. Uh, but again, congrats to JD. He won with his fire deck. I told JD I was going to beat him to the fire badge. That did not end up coming to fruition, unfortunately. So JD's got his third badge now. He's got water, darkness, and fire, which is pretty cool. I also decided to do something a little bit different last night and I uh, I did a little Ben Moore style vloggy vlog if you guys haven't already definitely make to, make sure to check out Ben Morse's uh, YouTube channel he's been doing like these kinds of cool like really fun personable like league vlogs uh, so I decided to do something like that um, because Ben wasn't there yesterday. So I was like, all right, you know, Ben's not there. So I'll try my hand at vlogging it and see how I like it, right? So I, uh, so we'll see. You know, and maybe this is something that I end up doing. I think that 
you know, looking at the content that I create on my channel, and I think I create some some stuff that I'm really proud of, definitely, and it's like got a lot of polish to it. But you know, I think that. I could definitely stand to create some stuff that's more like freeform and just riffing and and less produced, right? So I took the league vlog as an opportunity to do that. I just like grabbed my GoPro and I was like, all right, let's just go, let's just go riff around and and see what we can come up with, right? And I think that I think I'm I'm really good at making that kind of uh making that kind of content and just like doing kind of free form riffing stuff, but I don't do a lot of it. So I was like, you know, I'll, I'll give myself the opportunity to do more of that. Um, when I think of that kind of content, I think of like team APS, right? Cause team APS is like huge, but they do that kind of stuff like all the time. It's, it's more like stuff just like at their league and they're just like, they're just chatting and they got like, uh, you know, they got their camera and they're just bringing it around and just like doing fun stuff, right? So like, yeah, like this kind of stuff I specifically think of. Like literally they're just in the car shop, right? You know? And it's freaking awesome. Like I think, I think this kind of stuff is just super cool. And it's got so much personality to it. Um... I don't watch Yu-Gi-Oh! channels. And I don't even know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So I don't really know a lot about Yu-Gi-Oh! content. But I've seen Team APS, APS's stuff. But um, I really like that that content is like very personality driven though, right? And I think that, that that kind of stuff like has the potential to perform well online. I mean, it kind of makes sense with like the, you know, people, people like the kind of raw, unedited, you know, vibes to... Uh, content lately and I feel like um, I feel like my channel could use more of that less polish which is funny right because you would think that just more professionalism is better but I don't know in today's day and age who the heck knows right I think like a good uh I think like a good combination of like sheen and polish and then also like, you know, more casual uh, kind of personality driven freeform stuff could diversify the kind of stuff that I'm making on my channel and be really fun. So so yeah, so that's something I'm going to try. So I filmed, I took a bunch of footage and, and you know, I'm, the thing is though, is that I'm uh, I'm trying to like, <laughs> um, you know, I'm just gonna try it one time and see how it goes, you know? And if YouTube hates it, then I'll be like, all right, maybe never again. <laughs> so that's something I'm gonna try and put together. But another thing, Another thing that I, uh, I I need to be able to do is I need to be able to pump these out quickly, right? So they kind of need to be like, I need to be, if I'm going to do any sort of like league recap or vlog or anything like that, like I need to be able to like chop it up and send it, right? Like I can't, I can't labor over it or try to make it perfect or whatever. I, I It needs to be like kind of rough around the edges and just send it. Just get it out. Um, like, if I can't get these videos out by, like, Monday, I don't even think they're worth making for me. Because I'll just, like, yeah, I don't know. So so that's another goal that I have. But I'm also, like, I'm terrible at keeping to a schedule. Pretty abysmal at it, especially when it comes to producing YouTube videos. Twitch, I, I can manage to stream, you know, five days a week, uh, most weeks but lately it's been kind of four days a week because stuff's been coming up and also we're in the middle of a dead format on tcg live rotation happens in like a couple weeks so you know that'll pick back up but lately i haven't been pressing myself i've been you know, focusing on producing youtube videos and stuff like that um
I know Colin Wallen, you said uh, shorter videos as people's suspension, uh, attention span declines. Yeah, no, that's not for me. I don't, not into short form content. Just not a short form content creator. Just not my thing. I've talked at length about like kind of the TikTokification of content and uh, and videos and things like that. Just just not what I aim to do. Yeah, I'm not I'm not into it. Also, vertical content never, never. No, I'm a horizontal content main, and I will pretty much always be. So, yeah. Anyways, new cards. Let's talk about that. Enough waffling around. We'll just walk through Poker Beach, shall we? Yeah, I don't even have a TikTok account. I think uh, just really not for me. Or I guess maybe I made one just to take the Tricky Gym name, but I don't, I don't have the app or anything like that. But I wanted to make sure that nobody else took my name. Thank you, Patrick, for the sub in the 15 months. Oh, yeah, the choir, for sure. Pokemonproxies.com. Yes, big shout out to Pokemonproxies.com. Omnipoke's creation here. Sorry, Omnipoke, my bot got you. But yes. Whoa, you guys got everything? Man, I love this place. Yes, definitely shout out to Pokemonproxies.com. Uh, I know uh, Joe and Jack have been doing a really exceptional job with this. Uh, this is like the new hotness for sure. When it comes, dang, they got everything, bro. They got everything. They got it all. What the heck, dude? This isn't the entire set, though. But it is almost everything, right? It can't be the entire set. You got spinner arc? Maybe it is the entire set. Is this the entire set, bro? Surely you're missing some cards. Are you missing anything? Or is this all of Crimson Haze right here? No way. God, this looks so good. It's the entire Crimson Haze set. Hype. All right. Anyways, real quick, let's talk about Twilight Masquerade. We had these cards revealed. The Mask fellas, okay? We got Teal Mask Ogre Pawn EX with the uh, Teal Dance ability. You've got Hearth Flame Mask Ogre Pawn EX. Um, you've got Wellspring Mask Ogre Pawn EX. And you've got Cornerstone Mask Ogre Pawn EX. All right. Those aren't a mouthful at all. No. Those names don't barely fit on the cards. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Those, yeah, that's that's all fine. <laughs> Teal Mask, Ogre Pond, Single Prizer, and Ogre's Mask. Okay, before we read the cards, we should probably talk about the Ogre's Mask item. It allows you to choose a Pokemon EX in your discard pile that has Ogre Pond in its name and switch it with one of your Pokemon EX in play that has Ogre Pond in its name. It's basically like a... It's it's like a... What is it? Not Ninja Boy. But the one from the discard pile. It's like a... The thing. Thornton. It's like Thornton, but only for your Mask Boys. Yeah. That's like... But it's an item. Not a supporter, which is pretty cool and unprecedented. So that's a thing. Yeah. Any attached cards, damage counter, special conditions, turns in play, and any other effects remain on the new Pokemon. All right, so you can you can juggle these mask dudes around with the ogre's mask item card. Very cool. They're all basic Pokemon EX 
with 210 hit points. They are four different types. Grass, fire, fighting, and water. The grass one has the teal dance. Once during your turn, you may attach a basic grass energy from your hand to this Pokemon and draw a card. Myriad Leaf Shower does 30 plus 30 more damage for each energy attached to both active Pokemon. So you're doing 36912, and if your opponent has three energy attached to it, or two energy attached to it, let's say, let's say two. Uh, 15, 18, you're doing 180, right? So you can knock out a Charizard EX. If you have three grass and they have their two fire energy, you can knock out a Charizard EX. Sure, because you're doing 180 damage. But it takes three grass energy, which does seem a little bit limiting when we talk about the fact that the Ogre's Mask, right, is like... Uh, you know, gives the Pokemon the ability to switch around. And something that I noticed right away is that the water one and the fighting one have more agreeable attack costs with the fighting double colorless, the water double colorless. Then we've got like the three grass and we've got the three fire. These seem more limited, right? The Hearth Flame Mask Ogre Pond EX has got 210 hit points and the Wrathful Hearth attack does 20 damage times the amount of damage counters on this Pokemon. So if your opponent... Swings into it and doesn't quite get the knockout. You can punish them with a wrathful hearth. Dynamic Blaze for three fire energy does 140 damage. And if your opponent's active Pokemon is an evolution Pokemon, does 140 more damage and discard all energy from this Pokemon. That is a very wasteful attack, but it does 280 damage to evolution Pokemon like Pokemon V Stars. Torrential Pump does 100 damage. For a water and two colorless, you may shuffle three energy attached to this Pokemon into your deck, and if you do, it does 120 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. This is cool and all, but they also just revealed Greninja. And why would I care about any of that when I got the new Greninja? Rapid Strike Urshifu is back. Right here. I don't know. I guess he's a basic, right? And the Greninja EX is a stage two. But. Yeah, I mean, it's a basic, right? So that's good. With Baxcalibur. This card just seems really good with Baxcalibur, right? It's insane. It is a little bit strange to me that they are releasing two similarly effect cards in like back-to-back -back sets. Like why they got two cards that do the same dang thing in, in like back-to-back -back sets, bro. And we just had like Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX. He's like, is doing 120, 120 like just a necessary part of the Pokemon TCG though? Is that just like, is that just like a staple? Like we have to have it at all times. We have to have it. Is that is that where we're at? I don't know. It's a little bit the staple. Oh yeah, there's got to be a one twenty one twenty. It's got to be right. Right. We couldn't just chill on the bench damage for a little bit. We've already got Radiant Greninja, man. Yeah, 120 snipe is a core mechanic now. Like, man, bro. All right. And then you already know there's going to be some time when, man, if he rotates and all we have is the stupid poop bug to stop this stuff. You know that. You already know that. All right. <laughs> you know in the future, man, if he's not always going to be here to save you, and then you're going to have to do poop bug instead. So yeah, you could totally play this in Baxcalibur. It's only got a retreat cost of one. I mean, Baxcalibur, two Radiant Greninjas, essentially. Man, what the heck, bro? And, and Baxcalibur has Prime Catcher, and Baxcalibur has Canceling Cologne, and... The base 100 that it deals to the active is way more than enough to knock out Manaphy. 
Just saying, dude. Bax Caliber stocks are rising. And then we got Cornerstone Stance. Prevent all damage from attacks done to this Pokemon by your opponent's Pokemon that have an ability. Ooh. That's kind of cool. Defensive mode. And Demolished as 140 for fighting into colorless. Not affected by weakness or resistance or any other effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. All right. So he's like the... The defense, and I mean, it is a solid ability, right? I mean, canceling cologne can get through it, but that's that's a solid ability. I hate it when these kinds of effects get put on, you know, the ends of attacks. Like if it was demolished and during your next turn, it can't be like Alolan Vulpix V-Star. I hate that stuff. That stuff could get played around, right? It's much easier to play around it. I feel like the ability is stronger. And the fact that you don't have to attack proc the ability right you could just throw it into the active spot and be like deal with this <laughs> and then your opponent has to right so yeah and without path in format that's just a good ability for sure there is still yeah look how much better this guy is compared to Vulpix I mean it's not even close right this thing is like far better than Vulpix I mean, like, literally, look at look at Alolan Vulpix V-Star, right? Like, it does 20 more damage and has 30 more hit points, and it has to evolve. He's a basic with the Terra trait and does, like, a similar amount of damage. It's nuts. Right? Like, this card is just superior. Because it doesn't have to evolve. It's crazy. So that's that's hype. This does... The, the fighting in the water ones definitely seem like the best ones. And I don't think that that's, like, a very hot take. I mean, that's just, like, very evident. And these two kind of seem like the best. They have the most flexible attacks. Um, maybe more cards from Twilight Masquerade just need to be revealed, but I'm just like, I'm not seeing the vision. Am I missing the vision with the Ogre's Mask? This just seems bad. Right. Am I missing the vision? Like, are we really are we really pivoting between all all four of these dudes? Like, I don't think so. The green guy to make a mask ogre multi type deck. Oh, so you use this guy? Oh, I guess. I guess the dope thing is that this can activate. This can activate from the bench. And I don't think that I really understood that. Yeah. That's cool. No, no, no. This isn't as bad as I thought. Okay, so like, I thought it was like a once during your turn period type of thing. But it's not. You could have four Teal Mask Ogre Pond in play. And you could go attach, 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 and draw four cards. I mean, if you have four Grass Energy in your hand, right? So, like, that's that's not terrible. Like, I kind of see that a little bit. And then you, like, you know, ogre mask it into, like, once you get the energy accelerated into play with the with the grass one. All right. Okay. I guess I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of the vision now. Yeah. I'm seeing. And see, that's why I asked, because I was like, what am I missing? Like, this just seems like, like booty. But. Um, this guy is like a, kind of like a, an acceleration and draw engine, a basic based one, right? Iron leaves mixes with it. It does, right? I mean, obviously luminous energy mixes with it, right? So you just play like luminous energy. Yeah, the fire one seems like this one's unfortunate because it's like the coolest looking one. I think, yes. I don't know. He's he's kind of dope, though. I'm not going to lie. He's cool. 
I think he's the coolest one, though. But then also, like, he's probably just the worst. But, okay, so you could play one fire one. You could play just one fire one, and if your ogre pawn takes a hit, then you just... Wrathful hearth. <laughs> all right, I see the vision now. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Sure. Someone hits into your ogre pond without knocking it out. Gosh, but he seems so bad, though. If you're using this to accelerate energy into play, then you have to put the energy back into, like, shuffling all your energy back into the deck in, like, a... This seems like such a steep cost. Right. In a non-Baxcalibur deck, this seems like an extremely steep cost. And then you got to teal dance, teal dance. Like, you got to keep drawing into your ogre's masks and kind of like switching them around. This one's cool, but there there just are answers to it. Like this is a strong card. It is a strong card, but there are answers to it. I mean, there are obviously there are answers to it. Um, Arceus Alolan Vulpix V Star is kind of like already gaining some traction in Japan, right? So like. Decks may already be kind of like be prepped for this. Charizard has no answer to it. Not true. Uh, because Charizard can play ya boy uh, gouging fire. Right? Yeah. Charizard can play gouging fire to answer to it. I mean, it depends. Charizard doesn't, you know, maybe they're not playing an answer to it, but they can play Gouging Fire to answer it. And Gouging Fire is, like, not a bad card. It just depends if you want to tech for it. It's just a one-card tech. Gouging Fire EX, right? Completely clears Alolan Vulpix, Ogre Pond EX, all of that. And, like, teching for just an Alolan Vulpix is, like, you know, uh, but if it's like a little Vulpix and then there's like Ogre Pond and it becomes a thing, then you're like, all right, I'll, I'll put the Gouging Fire in my deck. Sure. You know, whatever. So. But yeah, against Charizard, you're probably trying to like, uh, it's true, you're probably trying to Myriad Leaf Shower. I think Gardenia's Vigor is a bad card. Um, I do not see, maybe I'm just a hater. I'm willing, I'm willing to, I'm willing to say that it's, it's definitely possible that I'm, I'm a little bit of a hater, but this card is not good. No, it's not good. It's not going to be good. Don't hold your breath. This ain't it, bro. It's not it. Nah, that's not it. It's not Welder. You can't look at this and be like, it's just like Welder. Yeah, it's just like Welder, but a lot worse. Well, I think like... Nah, that card is bad, bro. If that card couldn't make Reggie Drago V-Star work, then that card ain't making nothing work. Gardenia, Gardenia is so bad. It's like worse than Sada's Vitality. And I hate playing decks that rely on four Sada's Vitality. How do you think I'm going to feel about Gardenia's Vigor? It's worse. <laughs> it's so much worse. <laughs> I don't think Vessel fixes it. Yeah, if you could play supporters going first, like with Welder, maybe. Yeah. 
No, no one got hurt by Gardenia. The card's just not good. I'm trying to save you guys some time, okay? It's not good. This card is not good, bro. You're going to find... If Gardenia's Vigor could, like, accelerate to the active and drew three cards, I'd say yeah. That would... <laughs> to the bench two cards nah nah brah nah brah nah <laughs> nah two card draw you might as well not even be drawing cards dude no you might as well not even draw two that's not even a that's not even a hop dude this is a better draw card Right here. <laughs> yeah, this, you'd be better off playing. You'd be better off be playing Sir Hoppington, okay? Anyways, I'm a Gardenia hater, but I think that these cards do have some potential. There's some good stuff going on there. All right, huge shout out to PokemonProxies.com. It's OmniPokes creation. We got uh, Joe and Jack doing some awesome stuff on the proxy front. Um, just phenomenal, really. I mean, and they look great. Uh, as someone who has done this kind of, uh, as someone who has done this kind of proxying creation myself, um, it's time consuming. And laborious. This is all Jack. I assume so, but I didn't want to cut you out, Joe. Uh, if you were involved in any way. So anyways, this is Jack's creation. <laughs> Shout out to Jack. Yeah. Oh, I didn't want to cut you out if you were involved, you know. I didn't want to leave you hanging. But shout out to Jack for the awesome work he's been doing on this. I know it's a lot of hard work. And uh, it's a lot of times thankless. So I want to thank Jack for all the hard work he's been putting into this because it's a huge boon for the Pokemon TCG community. You know? Really? Like, they should probably just give us these scans in English. <laughs> you, you know? I don't know. Don't they do that with Magic the Gathering? Don't they just, like, when the sets are revealed, don't they just, like, give you the... I mean, I guess in in Japan they do. You got all the Japanese scans. It's almost like like the Pokemon company could just release the English scans at the same time that the Japanese scans get released. But I guess that I guess they don't want to do that for marketing reasons. So instead, they just like they put it on the community to create all this, you know, create all this stuff, which is fine. It would make my job a lot easier if they just released English scans at the same time they released the Japanese scans, but I guess I understand why they don't do that. But it also then creates this situation where we have to do all this extra work. It's a labor of love. Anyways, thank you to Jack for doing all this extra work. Awesome. You know, I've done it sometimes, but man, it is it is just a lot of work for, for, yeah. A lot of work. So I'm very thankful that Jack is doing it. Let's talk about some of these. These are all the new cards from our upcoming sets. Uh, well, Japan's upcoming set, Crimson Haze, which comes out next week. There's Tangrowth there with the Jungle Body ability. This Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks. And Loom Over, 150 damage, 10 less damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. Eh, not super into attacks like that. Pinsir, Slow Crunch. Discard all energy from this Pokemon at the end of your opponent's next turn. The defending Pokemon will be knocked out. Yep, not into attacks like that. Way too situational. Your opponent can just switch out of it, right? You just have to switch. Switch to the bench, retreat, any of that. And uh, they don't really have to worry about it. So, MTG Goldfish translates all the cards. Got it. Well, the cards aren't first released in Japanese in Magic, are they? I, aren't, isn't the first language that Magic cards are released in English? Or am I wrong on that? I would be very surprised. Ariados got the big net ability. 
Your opponent's active Pokemon, active evolution Pokemon's retreat cost is a colorless more. Well, that's weirdly, uh, weirdly kind of narrow. And then string bind. Uh, this attack does 30 more damage for each colorless in your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. Yeah, gosh, I just wish that this wasn't only evolution Pokemon, right? Like, it would, it would be such a stronger ability. I mean, I guess if you have, like, four Ariados in play, you're going to make it so Charizard EX's retreat cost is six. And then you can do, you know, one hit KO. Can you? What? Yeah. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. Yeah, you're one hit KO on Charizard EX. With four. All right. But with three, you make it five. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. You miss you miss the one hit KO on Charizard EX with, with three. Ariados in play, right? <laughs> like that, that's like, that's terrible. All right, I'm going to be honest with you. No. Omnipoke, nobody's getting 100k views off of this Ariados because not a single TCG Live video has reached over 100,000 views. Not a single one across all content creators. There are not 100,000 people in the world who care to watch TCG Live gameplay. I've talked about this <laughs> pretty extensively. I know the numbers, yes. The amount of people worldwide willing to watch a TCG Live gameplay right now on YouTube is about 50K. That's the top end. Yeah. YRG, why must you troll? Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah, you used to be able to like swing for the fences and go, what, 200K, 200K, 160, 160, 150, 140. Like if I was really memeing it up, you know. My highest view TCG Live related video is this one talking about, you know, the pros and cons of it. That's just because you got like, you know, release interest. But other than that, um, I mean, yeah, and then the next highest view TCG Live video I have is this one, 56K. Uh, it's talking about how bad it is. <laughs> and then po this video about TCG Pocket has more views than any TCG Live video that I've ever made. But my highest view TCG Live gameplay video, you got to keep scrolling, bro. It's like this one, 52K, talking about it being a failure, is this one, 47,000. That's the highest... Maybe it's because the joy is gone. I don't know. Maybe because it's different. Maybe it's because the platform doesn't work very well. Who knows? But yeah. This is upsetting to see. Yes, it is. But it's okay. We as content creators will adapt. And Joe, since you're here, I mean, I'll kind of, you know give you the little you know the the little uh kind of brief version of of kind of my conundrum but like yeah you know you got like Celio's network kind of branched off from gameplay and has been doing more like video essays and I think that like he's seen some success doing that like he's really hit some video essays out of the park that have like really caught on um you know, you guys uh, are doing tabletop gameplay, you're doing analytics, you're doing all that kind of stuff, which is like really cool. You got uh, Little Dark Fury is like kind of doubled down into the, you know, TCG Live silly deck YouTuber persona and is just like, that's just his space. And I don't, I don't even want to like compete in that space. But even Little Dark Fury, who swings for the fences with silly decks on TCG Live every single day of the week has only made a video with 50, I mean, 50,000 views is still his peak as well for TCG Live gameplay, right? So like, I know like between me and Little Dark Fury who are probably like the biggest TCG Live and, and like Azul as well, right? Like the biggest TCG Live gameplay YouTubers, nobody has above 50,000 views. So like, 
what's like the what's what's the direction for me right like where am i gonna pivot to because tcg live gameplay is like and also it's uninspiring for me like i'm not inspired as a content creator to create tcg live gameplay videos so like that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out right now because my tabletop videos, frankly, have been a little underwhelming as well. I'm really happy with how they look and how they're produced, but like as far as is gaining traction, like some of my older TCGO content did, like they just don't. So, so yeah, I'm kind of at a crossroads trying to figure it out myself as well. We'll figure it out though. I'm very passionate about the tabletop content, um, even if it isn't like the breadwinner of the channel. I'm okay with that. So, and I've had videos that are successful lately. I mean, like I'd consider the TCG pocket video is a huge success. That was a video essay, right? Like that's doing really well. My set reviews, 48K views, like that's really good. Like I, I definitely like that, right? But as far as like, you know, if, if, if the Pokemon trading card game live isn't gonna be like the vehicle, which is able to like allow me to hit some videos out of the park, right? and like crank a video out that's like getting over 100k views then what is going to be my vehicle to be able to like hit a home run right is it going to be video essays is it going to be uh <laughs> is it going to be tcg live gameplay am i just going to try and like make the silliest deck possible with the clickbaitiest thumbnail is that what i'm going to do you know what are people interested in seeing that i could potentially capture interest with in the pokemon sphere so you know something like that that's kind of what I'm, I'm like in the middle of that crossroads right now. But I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Like I just tried to do like a league vlog last night. It's going to be like looser and more, uh, and more kind of, uh, off the cuff. It's going to be less polished. It's going to be more personality driven. And I think that my YouTube channel could use a lot of that. So you know, maybe, maybe that ends up being cool, you know, but it probably also won't get like, it probably won't get a lot of views. So I think in order to do that, I'll probably have to go video essays. Like I like Celio's direction. I think that there are more people, there are more people in the YouTube sphere who care about maybe who are interested in the Pokemon TCG there are more people in the YouTube sphere and worldwide who are maybe slightly interested in learning about the Pokemon TCG and, and interested in any factoids and discussion about the Pokemon TCG than there are people who actually care to watch it be played, right? If that makes any sense. So. Now, I think top tens are falling off, low key. Top tens were meta, like, I don't know, five years ago. I'm very happy with the streams and the way the streams have been going. I got no qualms there. Like the streams, great streams are streams are going fantastic. I'm just trying to figure out what my, what my YouTube strategy is. And now that TCG live has been out for like over a year, it's kind of a good time for me to, uh, to kind of reassess, you know, what my YouTube strategy is. Right. Anyways, this area does stinks. Next up, we got Leafeon. Leafeon's got the Leaflet Blessing attack. You may attach a basic grass energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon and then heal all damage from it. That is terrible. Iron Leaves this is pretty good, right? 160 damage, revenge for three energy. Two of those are colorless. That's just a nice, solid, basic attacker. Good stuff. Poltergeist. 30 hit points. Shadowy Concealment. As long as this uh, Pokemon is on your bench, prevent all damage done on this. Ooh, it only has 30 hit points, but it has Bench Barrier. It's pretty cool. F, I appreciate that, but the problem is is that TCG Live doesn't inspire joy or laughter for me. <laughs> it doesn't inspire joy. <laughs> Which I think is part of the inherent problem. You know. And we got Sinistra EX. 
Infusion Retribution for colorless energy. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. Put two damage counters on that Pokemon for each basic grass energy in your discard pile. Then shuffle those energy cards back into your deck. Huh? Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. Put two damage counters on that Pokemon for each grass energy in your discard pile. And put those energy back into your deck. Well, that's kind of neat. I guess. I mean, you'd have to have like a lot of grass energy into the uh, into the discard pile, but I don't think it's incredible. But like, I don't know. Maybe there's maybe there's something there. Probably not. You need like a very specific mechanic. But the fact that you're gonna need to like keep getting energy into the discard pile just seems rough, right? But the fact that it's one colorless energy is the attack cost is like, that's the selling point to me. It doesn't only have 240 hit points, but like, that's a very easy attack to pay for, you know, in, in on one hand, it's a very easy attack to pay for, but on the other hand, uh, it's a very difficult attack to pay for because you have to have all this grass energy in the discard palm. There's a baby sinister coming up. It's meant to combo with. That'd be cool. All right, sick. It could be a finisher, right? In grass decks. I mean, that makes sense, right? Like, you're not planning to cycle Sinistra EXs. Uh, you're just planning on attacking with one, maybe, at the end of the game. So, that's kind of cool. Nine Tails. How about we give a Nine Tails 120 hit points, make it do about 90 damage? Yep. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Make Cargo EX, 270 HP. It's got the ground burn. For two fire and a colorless, each player discards the top card of the deck. This attack does 140 more damage for each energy card discarded in this way. I mean, it could do like 400 something damage, right? 420 damage, 420 is 420? It's 420, isn't it? <laughs> You jokesters. <laughs> <laughs> you jokesters. Yeah, that my cargo looks like he's doing 420 damage. But yeah, ain't nobody going to have two energy on the top of their deck. Come on, be real. This card's bad. Torkoal. Ramming Shell. During your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks. Fire spin, 110, discard two energy. Why must you be so bad? Why do they make bad Torkoals? Torkoal is so cool. Infernape has got the fire dancing ability. We've already seen that. It's basic fire energy and fighting energy are one of each from your hand to your Pokemon in any way you like. I don't think this card will be standard viable maybe in gym leader challenge maybe but 140 hit points for stage two is kind of feel bad in glc i mean you're gonna get hit by a lot of things um for a one hit ko and setting up stage two pokemon yeah you're probably better off just using charizard as your energy excel well you know in a way as it doubles up your energy This GU will never be as good as the Revenging one. Rampaging Hammer. During your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. Sorry, Crawdont. You are also bulk. Glaceon. At the end of your opponent's turn, put nine damage counters on the defending Pokemon. Bulk. Fion. Beckon. Put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand. I mean, maybe, maybe in Gym Leader Challenge, if you're playing some sort of water control deck, like maybe, but I'm pretty sure that there's just like way better cards, like. Who is it? Was it an Azumarill that puts like a bunch of supporters into your hand or something? Man, me and spelling. Azumarill. There we go. Yeah, this guy. Now that's an attack right there. Now this Froki. Man, that thing is cute. Look at that. Yeah, that's thank you, Crimson Arc, for that prime sub. And Patrick, I think I missed you a little little while ago there, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick, for that prime sub also. 
That is a cute boy. Froki. Also worth noting, you cannot use the attack flock in Gym Leader Challenge. <laughs> because the game knows the format now. It knows that you've got no valid targets because your Froki's in the active, so that's pretty funny. Discard all energy, 120 to one of your opponent's Pokemon. I mean, that's interesting. Uh, wouldn't be a standard card. I mean, in standard, you've got, I mean, countless better snipe Pokemon. But uh, since Gym Leader Challenge, you can't play rule box Pokemon, you know, 120 snipe is not terrible for three. You're probably better off just playing Kyogre, though. So that's the thing is, like, even in Gym Leader Challenge, that card is just going to get, uh, it's just going to get, yeah, th this is the better card in Gym Leader Challenge. So like three energy to your hand, one eighty to yep, exactly. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be so much better than Kramer Ants. Poor Kramer Ants. Sorry. Thank you, Spike Owens, for the sub and the twenty nine months. Appreciate it. The Walking Wake with the Cleaving Wave can do one hundred eighty damage if you damage it a bunch uh, for three. That's not bad. Holy smokes, Zapdos, my boy. 120 HP, uh, lightning can do 190 damage now, but, but, team up Zapdos, man, you're telling me you're going to take away lightning GLC's ability to dunk? No! Thunderous Assault. Yeah, team up Zapdos is that dude, bro. I mean, granted, it's like 80 damage. One energy. But taking turn one knockouts, Lightning loves that. This is the play. However, CMT says I don't play the team up Zapdos because it just gets stuck all the time <laughs> for the 1 in 45 games it dunks. That's not true. That's how you take that back. <laughs> you just got to play more Switch cards then. It sounds like you need to play more Switch cards in your Lightning Gym Leader Challenge deck. More Switch. You got to be playing Switch, Rope, Scoop Up Net, and Float Stone. And Guzma. You gotta be playing all those. That's a lot of switch cards. No, I'd be lying. And you turn board, but that doesn't really... I mean, yeah, it, you could retreat it. Yes. Then it's just a Zapdos deck. See? Now you're getting it. <laughs> No, you want all the switch cards because your deck can only accelerate energy to the bench Pokemon anyway. So the switch cards actually jive perfectly with a lightning deck. No, scoop up net's not banned. That person was talking about expanded. They don't know. They don't know. We're talking about gym leader challenge. It's not expanded format. Different formats. Yes, A specs are not allowed in gym leader challenge. But it is at least interesting. So, okay. So let's 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 go down this rabbit hole just a little bit because there is something to talk about, right? Because this Zapdos is a good card. I mean, 190 damage is nothing to scoff at. That is a very serious amount of damage. So you're going to be one hit KOing almost all big threats, big boy threats with that attack. Previously, the attacker that I was kind of using in this spot was Thunder Man. <laughs> hey, there we go. Previously, the attacker that I was using to uh, to deal with big boys was pretty much thunderous. 140 damage can knock out lots of things in Gym Leader Challenge. And then with Muscle Band, 160 damage can knock out even more threats. 
And with uh, electro power, you can hit up to 170, right? So, like, I've already cut Luxray because I stay winning in my lightning deck. So, Luxray already is at the bin. I never get that thing into play. I just be winning too much. <laughs> Electivire, the thing is Electivire never survives Parallel City. So, I like the attackers to be basics. But Electivire is good too. But, Electivire is good. I mean, Electivire is cool, for sure. I like Electivire, but you can only play 60 cards in a deck. There, I mean, Electivire is like right there in like the cards that I consider, for sure. But Thunderous... Thunderous is nuts. And that's why I play Scoop Up Net in my list now, so that you can potentially hit and then Scoop Up Net and do it again. Oh, I know you did, Dick. I know. I remember. But, okay, so so this is kind of where... This is kind of where... Uh, where I think this Zapdos can exist. So let's talk about that. Because currently... I, I won't even consider playing um, the TM Turbo Energize, right, in my Lightning Gym Leader Challenge deck because what's the point of playing Turbo Energize if you're just going to Zapdos turn one almost every single game? Nick Rosie, don't you play with me, dog. I got my Lightning Badge forever ago. Get six more badges, then we'll talk about skill issues. Nick Rosie, yeah. <laughs> Six more badges, then we'll talk about skill issues, okay? <laughs> hey, don't tell me skill issue. It's all love. He knows that. But yes, I'm not considering playing TM Turbo Energize in my uh, in my Lightning deck right now. Because I'm going turn one Zapdos, right? <laughs> Call of Duty Lobby Trash Talk. <laughs> Yes, but what I'm trying to get at, what I'm trying to get at is that if you're not playing Team Up Zapdos in your Lightning Gym Leader Challenge deck for the turn one, I know, JD, I got bodied. JD bodied me. I know. You got it, bro. You got the juice and the sauce. You got it all, JD. You destroyed me last night. In a battle of fire decks, you destroyed me. There you go. JD is the fire wizard. You got it. <laughs> yes. JD is the fire wizard. I am not. I can't take I can't take any uh no. I got I got nothing to talk about when it comes to fire. Unfortunately, but lightning, I can talk about lightning all day. But yes, right now I won't consider playing TM Turbo Energize in my lightning deck because it's like, well, I'm probably going to be aiming for a turn one Zapdos, right? So it's like, I don't really care to do this if I'm kind of dedicating space to getting a turn one Zapdos attack. However, if you're, you know, if you're playing a list that doesn't play team up Zapdos, then you might want to play this Zapdos. And if you're building a deck that like is trying to ramp up to big attacks like this, then you could very well fit Technical Machine Turbo Energize into your deck. So I think that this is certainly a card worth considering. And if you're going to play this Zapdos, which, I mean, can hit really big numbers, keep in mind, this thing can also get stuck, right? I mean, that is a problem with the Lightning deck. This thing can get stuck. Say Zapdos takes a knockout for 190 damage and then... And then what? If you don't have a switch card, then he's chilling there, bro. He, he might use Thunder Wave. So you do have to pick it back up, put it back onto the bench, or switch it to the bench, right? And then Dynamo or Dynamo, and then you can go again. So, or it's going to get knocked out.
Boomerang energy and lightning. Boomerang energy with... Uh... Boomerang energy with, uh, who am I thinking of? Reggie Lucky. Kind of seems insane. No, it doesn't. Because you have to discard two lightning energy. Never mind. Nah, boomerang energy is a meme. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, because this one's discarded all lightning. Yeah, boomerang energy is a meme. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Doesn't work. All right. If you were able to fulfill one of the energy discards with boomerang energy... Craig, the five gifted subs. Let's get some hype going for Craig in the chat. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate you, bro. Craig destroyed me last night with his psychic deck before having to scoop because of the tornado warning. Shout out to Craig. Appreciate the love there, dude. I'm sorry I was not able to avenge your scoop. I just... My my fire powers are not strong enough. They're just not, dude. I don't know, man. Some people, you know, some people are, you know, are water gym leaders. Some people are lightning gym leaders. Some people are not fire gym leaders. And that is me, okay? I don't speak the fire language. It's not, it's just it's not who I am. There's always next week. That's for sure, man. It's not who I am, man. And that's part of what makes it like... It's part of what makes it so... I mean, the Gym Leader Challenge uh, Championship Series at Full Grip. That's part of what makes it so challenging, right? Is like you have your handful of decks that, you're, that you like the best, that you're the most confident with. But once you get past all those, then it's like, man... And you see other people like JD just won with fire. Alex is won with fire. It's possible, man. It's just like, man. You got to master all the elements to become the avatar. I know it's possible. Like, I know it's possible, but God, it's hard, right? It, it's really, really difficult to kind of to become proficient with all the different decks in Gym Leader Challenge, which has been the most addicting part of it because it's like, it, it it's such a challenge. It really, it feels almost impossible, but I know it's possible, but it, it does feel very tough. And it feels like, it feels like the adventure is like, is almost like never ending, right? Like the quest to find the perfect list is like a never ending quest, which is like also kind of addicting. So it's fun. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been really fun. All right, so yeah, that Aptos can hit big numbers. That's pretty cool. More Peko. It's got the snack search ability. Once during your turn, you look at the top card of your deck, then you may discard it. Okay, that's like the uh, excavate. Yo, that's what's up, Pokemon Master Ryans. That's sick. In GLC, can you play the same type of deck even if you want a gym badge for it already? Yes, you can. I've been considering doing such a thing. I call that playing defense. And that's right. I'm frustrated with my remaining badge type, so I'm not even trying to earn a badge anymore. I'm just trying to Grinch everybody else. 100%. Oh, I've thought about playing defense, bro. 100%. If I don't feel like playing dragon, fighting, or fire one week, show up with my broken psychic or darkness or whatever. Yeah. I thought about it. It's, and also, like, you got to keep league on its, you got to keep league on their toes, you know? Got to keep legal. You become too easy to tech against if, you're, if your opponents all know you're going to play one of three types. 
So you got to keep, you got to throw some curveballs, right? If you're just trying to throw strikes, then you're going to ke- keep getting home runs hit. You see what I'm saying? You got to throw some curveballs. You got to throw a change up. Mix it up. And then come in, come in with the fastball, you know? Can't just throw. Yeah. See? You see what I'm saying? Not a baseball guy. But if it works. He's gone insane. <laughs> uh, Joe, I think the insanity hit, um, I don't know, probably sometime a year or two ago. I don't know. For those of you guys that have been watching for a long time, when did I truly become insane? Hmm. When did when did the sanity when did the sanity completely lose the sh- like when did the sanity flee the ship? When TCG Live came out. <laughs> no. When I think it was <laughs> When live came out, yeah. 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 Yeah, When live came out, yeah. No, there was no hope, bro. Twenty twenty one, that's when we made Gym Leader Challenge and Live was announced same year. More Peko. It's got the same ability uh, as Excavate, right? We do this in... uh... In Gym Leader Challenge. Excavate. Disable. Sableye. I mean, it just helps dig a little bit. But in the Lightning card pool... um, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that this card won't see play in Standard. But maybe it will. I mean, if there are certain... There are certain things where maybe you want to check the top deck in standard. So this is not a bad card. And then pitch and patch, attach up to two basic lightning energy from your discard pot of your Pokemon anyway. Like it's not a bad card. Uh, I do worry that maybe in Gym Leader Challenge the bench is a little bit too full to accommodate for this. So I think this is probably a stronger standard card than it is a Gym Leader Challenge card. Because Lightning GLC decks just have to go really wide. You want Zebstrika, you want both Dynamotors, like there ain't no room for more Pekka there. Yeah, I appreciate you, Matters Player. Thank you. A dino box card? Could be. There is Belly Bolt. 130 damage, 50 damage Thundershock. That's that's not really doing it, but it's got a very nice artwork. I mean, that is that is wonderful. Look at him chilling there. Can you guys see? Or is my camera over it? Oh yeah, you could see it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Iron Thorns EX. The initialize ability. When this Pokemon's in the active spot, Pokemon the rule box don't have any abilities. Wow, I didn't realize it turns off your own. All non future Pokemon don't have abilities. It turns off your own as well. And then Bolt Cycle, 140 damage. Move an energy from this Pokemon to your bench Pokemon. Thank you, Master Omak. For that sub in the 27 months. Best Pikachu for Lightning Spread GLC. Let's let's see. I personally am always gonna be a nuzzle, a nuzzler. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Paralysis wins games. Dang, they, they got a lot of a lot of Pikachu's. I guess that one was another one. Yeah. Anyways, Nuzzle Bro. This one's got a resistance too. And the artwork is fire. Paralysis wins games.
Thank you, Sam Pants, for the sub in the nine months. But yeah, Iron Thorns EX uh, is just a pretty good card. I mean, really, um, I think it's like kind of the premier ability locking card, right? Um, this could actually make future decks like decent. Turning off abilities, tanking hits, moving energy, hitting relevant cards for weakness. I worry that Iron Thorns, I mean, with with Iron Crown, I mean, you could hit up to like 200. Um, yeah, you could hit 220. I mean, 220 does like even hit numbers against like Chen Pao, right? But I do worry that maybe if like, not being able to turn off like Bax Caliber or Biberel is like just makes the card a little bit too limited, right? Because I, I I can't help but imagine just like Chen Pao is just like blowing this thing to smithereens, right? That's kind of yeah, I can't help but just but you know, against like Charizard EX, like there's gonna be no infernal rain happening. Unless they push it out of the active spot. But if they do push it out of the active spot, then you're in trouble, right? No Shivery Chill or Greninja for Chen Pao. That's true. I mean, Shivery Chill and Radiant Greninja are big parts of the strategy, definitely. And maybe just the initializability then is like enough to slow them down, right? I, I think that the Iron Thorns EX card is like exactly what the future toolbox deck needed, though. I, I do. Because as it is right now, the Iron Crowns are just like a little bit too vulnerable on the bench. And your active doesn't like preserve energy enough. Like the deck doesn't preserve energy well enough, right? Like having to rely on EXP shares and things like that is just like, it's not great. Being able to go like Iron, Thor Iron Thorns and then pass energy back to uh, your iron hands and then, like, break the lock, take additional prizes. Like, uh, the vision's coming together with this card, right? And this guy also is a fatty fat with a retreat of four, meaning that you could also play the, uh, the heavy baton, right? So, yeah. So I, I, I'm starting to see the vision with these guys. I think it's coming together. It's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. The Ferrigraph we saw previously with the Medium Rumble. It does 40 damage for each of your Stage 1 Pokemon in play. I'm not terribly impressed by that. I mean, just like needing to have massive amounts of Stage 1s in play. Like, what's, what's the most you're going to have? Four? 160 for two? Like, you're not going to have five, right? You're, you're definitely not going to have six. I mean, you could have six, but you're not going to have six. Let's be realistic. Captivating Temptation. Once during your turn, you may flip a coin. If head, switch one, switch in one of your opponent's bench Pokemon in the active spot. The new active Pokemon is now confused. Another stage two Pokemon. I don't think that this will be played in standard unless the format... I mean, just... In, a, in like... A, very slow format where 101 text like this made sense, you know, maybe, but like standards way too aggressive for a card like that to see play. And in Gym Leader Challenge, I think there's just better stage two Pokemon worth setting up. Screamtail EX, ancient 190 hit points, the sudden, sudden shriek. Can you only use this attack if you go second, only during your first turn. That is way too narrow. But during your opponent's next turn, they can't play any supporter cards. Ha! Ha! It's like Horror House GX, but, like, not nearly as good and uh, way too narrow. So, yeah, that's just not not it. Wow, these guys look nice. The Hisuian Growlithe and the Hisuian Arcanine. Whoa! And Nosepass looks nice, too. I really love this Nosepass artwork. This is cool. All right. If your bench Pokemon have any damage counters on them, this attack does 90 more damage. That's not bad. It's free. 
It's literally free, bro. Okay. That's pretty good. For free? I'll take it. That's not bad. I'm not going to lie. My... my In, uh, I'm talking about this card in Gym Leader Challenge. If you think that 120 damage is enough damage to deal in standard format, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. All right. It's, it's, just, it's not enough. <laughs> um, but in Gym Leader Challenge formats, um, I mean, there's like there's a couple different fighting decks that you can build in Gym Leader Challenge format. Uh, I mean, not just a couple. I mean, really, there's there's like a hand a handful. I mean, there's quite a few. One of them, I'm working on like a Colossal deck right now, which plays this Hisui and Arcanine. Uh, it does 180 damage if you have a Fire Energy attached to it. Colossal accelerates Fire and Fighting Energy from your discard pile to your Pokemon every turn. So there's obvious synergy there. 160 damage plus burn is 180. That's like just really good damage output. But then there's also like your Earthquakers, right? Um, which is like Don Fan, right? You've got your Earthquakers, like Don Fan from Vivid Voltage, 120, 20 damage to each your bench Pokemon. That's usually a downside, but anytime you can turn that into an upside, that's very good. So this Arcanine turns that into an upside with its Proud Fangs attack, which does 120 for you know, zero energy, which is just cool. Um, and there are ways to boost your damage output as well. Uh, muscle band, strong energy. Uh, there's the fighting dojo and, and all of that. The earthquake deck, uh, and I guess I call it the earthquake deck, but I think right now my, my kind of, I guess I'll call it like a low energy cost fighting deck, right? There's just a bunch of good guys that attack for like one energy, like Palosand, right? Come on, Palosand. Sand. <laughs> Come on, this guy, yes. Two S's? Come on. There's this guy, there's the... Uh, there's the uh, Lucario, right, who revenges for 150. There's, like, Machamp, who attacks for two energy. And one of the most difficult parts about this deck is even just, like, kind of streaming the energy you need to attack. Uh, it plays lots of Stage 1 Pokemon, and that's kind of the thing, is, like, you want to be able to get, like, a quick Stage 1 and just start swinging. This guy doesn't seem bad. I mean, really, he's not. Uh, 120. There are like a lot of there are a lot of attackers in gym leader challenge format who have less than 120 hit points. I mean, you'd be surprised. Like 120 damage isn't a lot of damage. You're not going to use this Arcanine to take big knockouts, but I think that this Arcanine could be good to kind of like keep tempo in the middle of a game if you need to knock out a Pokemon with less than 120 hit points or hit for weakness, right? Or hit for weakness. I know. And I see Nick saying, fighting's gonna be completely rebuilt with Okie Dokie, and I agree, Okie Dokie changes the game completely. That card is insane. Yes, I know, I know. You're so right, I know. Yes, that card is nuts, bro, it's nuts. Fighting is, yo, fighting about to glow up for real. All we need is a draw card. We should legalize Clay Doll. What do you think? All right, let's move on. Assault laser, 80 damage plus 80 more damage. Uh, if this guy has a tool attached to it. Halucha. Oh, he's cool too. But we got to talk about Greninja EX. All right, Greninja EX. 310 hit points. It's got the ninja blade attack. You may search your deck for any card and put it into your hand. It's like quick search. Wow. Wowie! It's like quick search. It's like a quick search that does 170 damage. It's like quick search, but you can't play the card after you search for it. You gotta wait a turn. Huh. And then duplicate barrage. Discard two energy from this Pokemon that's attacked as 120 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. One retreat, 310 damage, fighting type. Weak to psychic. You know what? I'm gonna ask you. 
chatters. What do you think? What what do you think about Greninja? Oh, there is the boomerang energy. Holy moly. Can't talk about this card without talking about the boomer energy. Boomerang energy. If this card is discarded by the effect of an attack used by the Pokemon it's attached to, that card uh, returns to the Pokemon after discarding it. Pretty schnazzy. You could fire off back-to-back -back duplicate barrages. Tron Dragon, are you... Uh... Oh, never mind. I was going to say, are you trolling? No, I thought you said Mew VMAX. Never mind. Mew EX. Mew EX, dude, you can copy duplicate barrage with Mew EX. That's pretty funny. True. John Valjean says, all the words on Greninja are good words, but there's probably not a word where you put it into a deck. Irida can't search for it. See? All right. That's that's interesting. Interesting thought there. Psychic weakness isn't bad because Gardevoir is dead. Is it better than Garchomp? It feels very similar. It does feel similar to Garchomp, doesn't it? Nick Rosie's a Greninja hater. YRG says this card is definitely good. Ding, ding, ding. All right, you two duke it out. <laughs> I'm just going to sit back and watch. <laughs> You could use double turbo, 100 snipe to two. Reminds me of Urshifu. It does remind me a lot of Urshifu, right? I think that's, that's obviously, right? Nick Rosies says, it's a stage two that does 170, therefore poop emoji. <laughs> that is very valid criticism. Yes. What's up, Teddy USXD? How you doing? Please stream on YouTube. I'm begging you. Oh, you don't like Twitch? You're here now. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for being here. I'll think about it. You can use it with Bax Caliber. Irida searches for every other part of the deck. Are we really talking about a dual stage two deck? Is that what we're talking about? Bax Caliber Greninja? I don't. I don't think so. Pidgeot Zard is a dual stage two deck and it's the BDIF right now. Well, it's a little bit different. Pidgeot gets you whatever you want out of your deck every turn. It's different, right? It's different. And don't tell me that Greninja does too because that's also different. <laughs> don't be... <laughs> That's also it's also different. I get it. It does also, it, but that is also different. All right. <laughs> Greninja and Palkia V Star. Palkia V Star can only accelerate the water at water Pokemon. Yo, Greninja Pidgeot though. All right, that sounds. That sounds fire. Greninja Pidgeot. 
You get to search your deck for two cards every turn. All right, now we're spitting. Now they just need to reprint Karina. Just reprint Karina, dude. It's high time we got Karina back. YRG said that a while ago. All right, YRG, you get all the credit for that thought. There you go. Here's your credit. You get the credit. All right, if we had Karina, though. Just think. <laughs> if Cheryl, I know, right? I know. Okay. I think, uh, what is this card? What does this card perform well against? I think, like, we're looking at. Yo, what's up, wayward baboon? Shout out to Sam. Yo, what's up, Sam? Everybody say hello to Sam. What's up, Sam? How you doing, Sam? Thanks for watching. Hopefully you're having a great day. Pokemon master in the making right there. Snoopy with the gifted sub. Appreciate you, Snoop. Thanks. All right, so we got. Let's let's think about because we're thinking about like what does Greninja EX like in a vacuum? The card seems like it's got good stats, right? It does, and this card is way better than it's gonna get comparisons to Garchomp, right? It's gonna get comparisons to Garchomp, but I I don't think that's fair because Garchomp is not good. All right, and part of what makes Garchomp really bad is that. It can't actually perform a good attack by itself. Like Hydro Lander, that's, that just ain't it. 160, Accelerate 3, Fighting from your discard pot of your bench Pokemon. It's like, it's also weak to Lightning. Nothing interesting is weak to Water. I think that's a really good point. Sonic Dive also is 120 to 1. It's, it's like Greninja's second attack is literally twice as good. It's 120 to 2. It's like twice as good for one extra energy, right? Yeah, hilariously enough, Garchomp also doesn't, you're right, it doesn't two-shot Charizard, and that makes a big difference. Right, 170, and that's a huge difference. 170 is two-hit KOing everybody, right? Whereas, like, 160 is not. That's a big difference. Sonic Dive is also a miserable attack. 120 to 1, discard 2, bad. 120 to 2, discard 2? Okay. I can get behind that. So, fighting typing is also like, historically, fighting typing is one of the strongest uh, types in the Pokemon TCG in that it hits multiple types for weakness. I mean, it's one of the strongest offensive, what I what I meant by that, not one of the strongest types, because it historically has never been one of the strongest types. But it has been, historically is one of the strongest offensive types because it hits multiple types for weakness. You're going to hit, uh, well, I guess no. Well, yeah, you're going to hit some colorless Pokemon for weakness. You used to hit darkness Pokemon for weakness. Man, they nerfed fighting, bro. They nerfed fighting. This this is so sad. Used to hit colorless, darkness, and lightning for weakness, which made it just awesome. Are there any dark Pokemon weak to fighting anymore? Aren't they all weak to grass? It's true. Shupan says multiple types also resist fighting. This is true and factual. Yes. It's true, it's true. So, um, Greninja, I, I'm going to proceed with, you know, proceed with caution. I think Greninja could be interesting. But I don't think it's, like, broken or anything. I think 
If you want a deck that does 120 to two things, play your Baxcalibur deck. You've got Radiant Greninja's the best Pokemon in the format at doing that. And now you got the new Teal Mask guy. Wellspring Mask. You've got him. So I think that as far as getting that Rapid Strike Urshifu style effect of an attack where you're like hitting multiple things, Baxcalibur is the premier deck at making that play happen. Baxcalibur is the best deck in format at doing that. So when we're talking just specifically about sweaty standard, where we're just looking for the optimal way to do things, right? Baxcalibur decks are the best way to do that. So then what does Greninja EX offer? It's a stage two fighting type Pokemon that does 170 and, and tutors a card from the deck. Like, and it has the option to do a little snipey snipe, but is not as efficient at doing it as Baxcalibur decks are. So Greninja seems okay. You know, you could play Turo Scenario, you can pick up Greninjas, put them back down, slug away for 170, but the problem with that is that decks in this format can one-hit KO. So I think that this strategy is booty. All right, I think Greninja's bad. Fine, there we go. That's where I'm at. I'm landing there. These, because if, if the thing that Greninja does best is tank and heal, right? Tank and heal strategies are not good. Therefore, yeah, the tank and heal strategies are not great. They just haven't been. It's because too many decks one hit KO things, right? Too many decks one hit KO things. That's my summation of it. But maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Halucha has got the prize counts attack. If you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, does 90 more damage. That's pretty cool. This is probably the most playable Halucha in Gym Leader Challenge that we have. 140 damage for two energies. Not bad. 70 hit points is mighty low. But it is like this kind of comeback attacker, which is not bad. I mean, it's not bad. Low energy count, attack cost too. If you have a fighting dojo in play, right? You can do 40 more damage if you're behind on prizes. So, I mean, you could do 180. It's cool. Poff and searchable. It's true. Not a lot of HP for two energy. Not as good if you're winning or tied. It goes in Hitmon. I like that, actually, because... The Hitmon deck does need a way to deal with, like, a solid active Pokemon. And I think that Halucha is probably the best bet at doing that. So I think that that's, like, that's that's true. Yeah, Hitmon combo is really good. Yep. Halucha could certainly go in there. You could play it with Counter Energy. That's true. Get a nice little um, counter play there. Uh, and you could play, like, Halucha. You could play... Um, pseudo Wudo, right? Why am I so bad at spelling Pokemon names? You're really seeing it today. Watch and learn pseudo Wudo. Also goes pretty well with counter energy. Neat little guy. Ting Lewis. It's got the ground crack attack. If stadium's in play, it does 30 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. What? What, bro? Yeah, Nick Rosie. It works with Aurora Energy. It works with Luminous Energy. It works with Rainbow Energy. Yeah, Okie Dokie's insane. What, bro? This is everything I ever dreamed of. This is it, dude. This is broken. This is it. This is the guy. Ting Lewis is the guy. Finally. I have been waiting for this moment. All. 
All I wanted, bro, is a partner for Palo Sand. All I wanted for fighting decks is for Palo Sand to have a friend. That's it. He needs a friend. He does 30 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. And now he's got a friend. Ting Lewis also does that. And for one energy. Oh, man. Oh, it's finally time, bro. Oh, it's finally time. And they both have 140 hit points. They're huge, dude. They're huge. One of my beefs with the Hitmon combo deck is it just like it's it's too it's too wombo combo. -y. You like have to do one, then the other, then the other, and then like your opponent is just like can really play around it. Like But with Ting Lu and Palosan, man, they're just coming in for 30, bro. They're just coming in for 30 to everything. No, I'm not I'm a I'm a Hitmon combo hater for sure. The stadium being needed? Nah, you're chilling, dude. Just play a lot of stadiums. You just play play a lot of stadiums. Stadiums are broken. God, this is so good, dude. I'm so excited about this. My fighting boys. My fighting boys, dude. You can get turn one ground crack, dude. Turn one ground crack. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Turn one ground crack with Goose Mahala. What? Yeah. This guy is nuts. I had no idea that this was going to be my favorite. I had no idea that Ting Lewis was going to be my favorite gym leader challenge card in the set. Ting Lu? I thought they'd never print a decent Ting Lu. Thank you, Snoopy. All right, so Snoopy answered that. If you have a Silent Lab in play, does it still go through Bench Barrier? You discard the stadium after the damage is dealt. So... Thank you for that, Snoopy. Uh, that helps a lot. I actually did not answer that question because I did not know the answer. Yeah, you get the Artisan that deny the opponent the Artisan. You get to play Artisan, Brooklet. Oh, yeah, dude. And then your opponent can't even use your Brooklet anymore. <laughs> yes, Necrolash, gymleaderchallenge.com is a great place to learn more about Gym Leader Challenge. We've got a bunch of getting started guides, things like that. Yeah, this thing, this thing rocks, dude. It rocks. Oh, this changes the game, bro. This changes everything. <laughs> Thank you, Dickerzanti, for the sub in the three months. This changes everything. Wow. You know who else changes everything? This Applin right here. It's a big gym leader challenge card because it is the first dragon type Applin. Look at that, all grass. They're all grass. So that means that Dragon decks could not play Flapple. So sad. Because this is a good attacker. In Gym Leader Challenge format, there's a lot of abilities because abilities are really good. I know that this is obvious, but abilities are very good. So Flapple, Doing 50 damage for each of your opponent's Pokemon to play it as an ability. I mean, very easily just do 200 damage for one energy, which is nuts. The Dragon decks didn't really have easy access to it because there was no Dragon Applin. And Gym Leader Challenge is a monotype format. Now, we are finally 
getting a dragon applin. And it's not just bulk either. It's got find a friend. He finds a friend. It's great. Wonderful. I love it. You know, thank you for the raid, only one. Search deck for a Pokemon, put it into your hand. Great. I love cards with lots of utility. Diplin. It's got the Syrup Catcher. Switch in one of your opponent's bench Pokemon to the active spot. Does 70 damage to the new active Pokemon. If you wanted to play Diplin in your Dragon Gym Leader Challenge deck, you could. This card will not see play in standard, but in GLC, it's not terrible. What's funny is you could play the Applin, and then you could play a 1-1 Diplin Flapple line, right? That's pretty cool. We'll get Hydrapple. Yeah, what the heck is a Hydrapple, by the way? I saw that. Can anybody explain to me what a Hydrapple is? What is he? It's a new Pokemon in Indigo Disc. I've never seen this thing before. It's <laughs> he's a Hydra. <laughs> All right, who does he evolve from? Does it only evolve from Diplin? Or does it evolve from like... So is a stage two evolves from Diplin? I'm looking at it. You overestimate my visual comprehension. Sure. All right, so could we get into like... Could we get into funny... Uh, gym leader challenge deck situations where you play like you play Applin and then Flapple and then if there's like a really good Hydrapple you could play like Rare Candy Hydra <laughs> or Diplin and Hydrapple you, you play this like 1-2-1 one, one line right where you have like a 1-1-1 one, 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 one kind of situation that's hilarious You could play Appleton as well, a 1 3 1. <laughs> yes, because there's also the catcher Appleton. I don't think he's very good, but. Oh, not him. He's special energy. The catcher is grass. I forgot. Yeah, delicious aroma. This guy, he's not very good, guys. Come on. But I guess if your opponent has lots of special energy in play. All right, where are we at? I've already talked about these guys. Oh, Tinglu. Tinglu, he's so broken. He's so good. EV, Ascension. Love a good Ascension attack. It's great. Snorlax. 160 damage for five. You know what's better than 160 damage for 5? 180 damage for 3. But he's got 160 hit points! Goodness. <clears throat> Blood Moon is Ursaluna. Yeah, this card's crazy. We've talked about this card uh, pretty extensively already on the channel. But, I mean, it's like Radiant Charizard, but any deck can play it. And it's got 260 hit points, and it uh, does 240 damage. And if your opponent's taking 5 prizes, it uh, can attack for free. So, uh, there's that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, this card's crazy. Card's just incredibly good. I woke up this morning and I saw the Hyper Aroma card on, uh, on X.com. The very cool named X.com. Very cool social media app where you do lots of posting and Xing on the X app. 
extremely cool, edgy social media app with great branding. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I saw the hyper aroma, and my initial reaction when seeing it was that this round of this round of A specs, I think, is much more interestingly designed than the last round of A specs. And I think that they're doing a really good job of it. What do you guys think? I'm kind of curious. I mean, that's my opinion. I did kind of give my opinion first. So, like, but, but, you know, I mean, last time was the first time they ever did them. So, but these seem like, these seem a lot more interesting. And it just seems like, there's some real thought to be had about which decks are going to play which. Yeah, I do. I like it better when it's not just like, are you going to play computer search? Are you going to play dowsing machine, right? I agree with you, McClid. I do think that the... Uh, I think that the Scarlet, I, I think everything designed after Scarlet and Violet's been pretty fun. And these are two interesting A-Specs, definitely. For those of you that don't know, Hyper Aroma is a item A-Spec card that allows you to search your deck for up to three Stage 1 Pokemon, reveal them, and put them into your hand. If you are someone who missed your Evolution Incense... Now we've got three and one. Well, but only for stage ones. I do agree. Maybe this card would be slightly better if it got just three evolution Pokemon. And put them into your hand. Three stage ones is a little narrow. Um, it's a little narrow because the best time to get this card is on turn two. Right? Right? Like, the best time to open this card, the best time to play this card is on turn two. The second best time to play this card is on turn three. Other than that, you don't want to play this card. You could Arvin for it. That's true. That is that is true. That is true. All right. Okay, you know, that's not bad. <clears throat> Golden Go? Yeah. All right. Golden Go... All right, that's kind of insane, actually. Gardevoir also. Wow, you're right. Gardevoir? Just go get... Ah, I think I'll get Curlia, Curlia, Curlia. Golden Go's already playing Irida. This is true. Yeah. I think this card this card is good. Co19 says Zoro Box loves this one. Zoroark is dead. Zoroark rotates. Zoroark is gone. So yeah, Hyper Aroma, I guess. Okay, so my beef with it originally was that, yeah, it's really just, it's it's a turn two card. You want to see this card on turn two? Period. No other turn. But you can tutor it out. I mean, you could go search it with Arvin or Irida. So, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I like it. Unfair stamp. Each player shuffles their hand in their deck, and then you draw five cards, your opponent draws two. I mean, it's kind of crazy. But you can only play the card if your opponent took a knockout. So your opponent has to be set up uh, set up enough to perform a knockout attack in order for you to play unfair stamp. So it's really not that unfair. Is it a misnomer? It'd be more unfair if you could play a turn one. That would be truly unfair. This, it's not that unfair. Your opponent took a knockout to punish them. <laughs> uh, 
I think it's more fair and balanced stamp. How long until someone calls for a standard ban on unfair stamp? I don't think ever. I don't think this card will be that good. I think it's just fine. Now this guy is cool. Oh yeah, we got an enhanced hammer reprint. I love that. I think this card should always exist in standard, personally. I almost wish that they would have called it Enhanced Hammer 2 or something. Enhanced Hammer 2.0 so that we could have two different Enhanced Hammer cards in Gym Leader Challenge, but it's fine. I'll take it. Survival Cast. This is like a really interesting looking thing. Can you imagine equipping this onto your Pokemon to make it survive an attack? Like, are you really going to put them? <laughs> Can you imagine, like, putting this goofy contraption on your Blastoise? <laughs> or, like, on your Weedle or something? <laughs> yeah, hey, come here, Pikachu. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They I think they're going to need a tetanus shot after wearing this thing. It's the thing from the Sand Shrew episode, literally. Survival Cast is a tool card that reads, if the Pokemon this card is attached to is as full HP and would be knocked out by damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, that Pokemon is not knocked out. Its remaining HP becomes 10. And you just card this card. So it's like a Focus Sash for everybody. Everybody gets a Focus Sash. You get a Focus Sash. You get a Focus Sash. No longer are just fighting Pokemon from 2014 able to wear a Focus Sash. Now... Everybody gets a focus sash. It's funny how this, this, <laughs> you know what's funny to me is that this singular piece of ribbon is capable of doing the same thing as this gigantic metallic contraption. <laughs> That's, can, someone, can someone please explain that to me? Just please explain it to me like I'm five. How is it that this rib, this single piece of ribbon does the same thing as this? They don't make them like they, <laughs> like they used to. <laughs> Magic. Oh, yeah. I actually really like the way Survival Cast looks because I think it's hilarious. I think this card rocks. Yeah, I'm not I'm not making fun of it like bad. I'm making fun of it like good. Like, I think this thing is cool. <laughs> but but it is hilarious and kind of like it does produce a lot of questions like how does a whale or <laughs> how does a whale lord wear it? <laughs> It expands, yeah. I think the lore of the survival cast is is fascinating to me. Who created it? All right, who in the Pokemon universe created the survival cast? Is survival cast like a? Is this a, an item that's like, like in the game at all? Are these things that exist in the game like a hyper aroma or a survival cast? Or are these just made up just straight for the TCG? All right, so they're, they're trading card game, original creations. I love that about. It. 
I love that about the Pokemon TCG. I I love it when the Pokemon TCG creates their own things. <laughs> Do I think that Ampy very much is an actual attack in the VGC? No, probably not. No. No, attack names, I they they go they go buck wild with attack names. I know that. But there's a lot of like items that are like lucky helmets a thing in the VGC, right? There's a lot of things that are like that carry over. No? It's not. But Rocky Helmet is. Ah, that's the one. I'm, I'm I am thinking Rocky Helmet. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Rocky Helmet. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Well, I think that they should put the survival cast in the VGC, right? This is the kind of this is the kind of art inspo that the video game's been missing lately, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone This is this is the kind of stuff that we need over in the video game. We don't have enough things like survival cast. Focus Sash already exists. That's cool. Survival Cast can do something different. <laughs> Love Ball is like a really, really, really bad card. Search your deck for Pokemon with the same name as one of your opponent's Pokemon to play. It's like worse than Friend Ball. And Friend Ball wasn't even very good. Caretaker, draw two cards. Then if Community Center's in play, shuffle the character. Keeper back into your deck. Caretaker back into your deck. That's not very good. Lucian. Each player shuffles their hand. Puts the bottom of their deck. Then you flip a coin. I wish it was rock, paper, scissors, honestly. The winner draws six. Loser draws three. Be better if it was rock, paper, scissors. That's fine. Perrin. Reveal up to two Pokemon from your hand. It's like a double Pokemon communication. You do the old swap not into that one. Lana's assistance. Put up to three in any combination of Pokemon that don't have a rule box and basic energy cards from your discard pile in your hand. It's like kind of a nerfed uh, Clara. Community center. Once during each player's turn. That player has already played a supporter from their hand. They may heal 10 damage for each of their Pokemon. Eh. And then Boomer energy is pretty cool. Let's talk about these guys. Here he is. Ogie Dogi. Oh my gosh. He's so good. He's so good. All right. Let's talk about the other ones first. Sinistra. All right, we saw the Sinistra EX. This one's got 70 hit points, but four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. Matcha all out. Discard up to three basic grass energy from your Pokemon in play. This attack does 70 damage for each card discard in this way. Wait, but how are you supposed to get grass energy on all your Pokemon? Gardenia, don't you dare. Don't even talk about Gardenia. Don't you mention Gardenia in my vicinity. Yeah, Gym Leader Challenge does have a decent amount of grass acceleration. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Sinistra in Gym Leader Challenge, Sinistra, I mean, you could do 210. You could be just cranking out 210 damage. The problem is that Sinistra doesn't combo with Venusaur. I went too far. Yeah, Jungle Totem makes it so that each of your grass energy provides two grass energy, but from the looks of things, Matcha All Out counts the energy cards uh, discarded and not energy discarded right and that card text uh makes a difference so but i mean if you've got rillaboom set up in gym leader challenge format then you're looking at like okay voltage beat 
two grass from the deck, not you, two grass from the deck straight to your Sinistra attached from hand, and that's 210. I mean, that's pretty good. So, yeah, that, that ain't bad. I mean, 210 for, in one turn. Thank you, Ewok Chief, for that sub in the 56 months. Yo, 56 months is crazy. Thank you. Yeah, the energy doesn't have to be on Sinistra either. It's not bad. 70 hit points is a very low amount of HP, but it's not bad. Gym Leader Challenge, this card's viable. But do you really want to set it up? I'm thinking... Personally, I'm thinking that I I got the new Bramble Ghast in my Gym Leader Challenge deck. I took out... Um, in my Grass Gym Leader Challenge deck, I took out uh, Cricketune, and I'm playing Bramble Gas now. Yeah, dude, Bramble Gas just kind of crazy, man. After I played against Jesse with Bramble Gas and Standard, I was like, "Oh yeah, I gotta get this dude in my Gym Leader Challenge deck for sure." Bramble Gas, I mean, like. What do you take out to fit Rapskin? If you want to play Rapsky, I think you just have to take out the Cricketune. Like, it's just... Your your bench only has so much space. Monkey Dory. This is, I think, my first time experiencing many of these guys. Monkey Dory. It's got the Adrenaline Power ability. Once during a turn, if this Pokemon has any dark energy attached to it, you may move up to three damage counters from one of your Pokemon to one of your opponent's Pokemon. That's kind of crazy. And then Mind Bend. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. Uh, okay. Once during a turn, if this Pokemon has any dark energy attached to it, and if any damage is done to this Pokemon by attacks, flip a coin of heads prevent that damage. Okay. And then Energy Feathers does 30 damage for each energy attached to this Pokemon. This card is good. Yeah. <clears throat> the pheasant, pheasant dipity, dipity, the pheasant dipity, pheasant dipity. Yeah. Well, because a lot of psychic decks are already favoring playing some special energy because they're playing in, and I'm talking gym leader challenge. These guys do not seem good in very, uh, these cards aren't seen playing standard. Hate to hate to burst your bubble, but a lot of uh, gym leader challenge decks are already playing Necrozma, right? Because it's got special laser, and then you've got uh, Tinkaton as well, which gathers materials, has special hammer. So like. A lot of psychic decks are already playing special energy. So you could very easily play like an Aurora energy or a rainbow energy, right? And then you're like 50% invincible. That's pretty cool, right? But the energy feathers, I mean, you're only doing as much energy as attached to this Pokemon. I saw somebody said you could play Fezzendipity in... Gardevoir, you could play Fezzendipity in Gardevoir, but then you have to have a darkness energy attached. Are we going to do Gardevoir with Luminous? And I mean, you could accelerate five energy to do 150 damage and be invincible sometimes. Like, Monkey Dory is broken. I don't think Monkey Dory is broken. Monkey Dory. The problem with Monkey Dory is it's a support Pokemon, but it has to have an energy on it. It's, yeah, it's not nearly as good as Radiant Alakazam. It's like a multi condition support Pokemon. Here are all the conditions that need to be satisfied you have to have a darkness energy attached to it. You have to have damage on your Pokemon, right? That's like a lot for a guy who... You're never attacking with this thing, right? Never. You know? 
So, like, the energy that you put onto Monkey Dory is is purely a wasted energy. Like, you have to waste an energy attachment for turn to put an energy on that thing. Right? It's a support Pokemon that only starts working once you attach to it. Like, imagine if Radiant Alakazam only worked if you attached to it. That would be terrible, right? Like, literally, that would be that would be horrible. The reason we play Radiant Alakazam is because it's just very easy to get into play and start using. This is the opposite of that. <laughs> yeah, this is very difficult and convoluted to use. Uh, Chris Kobe says, one energy drop to heal and do 150 to 180. I don't think so. I mean, what? In standard format, like, how much... How how many damage counters are even getting placed on your Pokemon in standard format? Everything's getting one hit KO'd. Chen Pao one hit KOs. There's uh Giratina V Star one hit KOs. Charizard EX one hit KOs. Chen Pao, everything. Every single deck in standard format is aiming to one hit KO. Everything. This is for Sableye? Are you telling me that people are hitting your your Lost Box deck for not a one hit KO? Really? There, people are punching your confies and not knocking them out. <laughs> Is that what's happening? I just it's not it's not good. It's not good. The survival cast. No, it's not good. The monkey dory is too situational. Radiant Alakazam is better. Gudra? The dropping an energy on this thing is the deal breaker for me. The fact that this needs an energy drop. No, Chris Kobe, I'm not saying that everything one hit KOs 100% of games and 100% of turns. I'm not. However, most turns. So what I'm saying is that this card's usefulness is like decreased even further because of the sheer number of one hit KO strategies in standard, right? So what I'm saying is like it already has niche use and that niche use is getting even further smaller, right? Like it's opportunity to be effective is so small that I can't see it being a, a great card, right? The opportunity for effectiveness is just too small, I think, in, in my opinion. There are a few mechanics that place damage on yourself, however, there are better ways to increase the damage that you're dealing to your opponent's Pokemon. I would argue. Than attempting self-damage to just move it around with an energy. There's there's way there's way better ways to do a little bit of extra damage to your opponent's Pokemon than trying to mess around with all that. Yeah, I think of these two, Pheasantipity is like way better. But let's talk about Okie Dokie. All right, Okie Dokie, this guy is broken in Gym Leader Challenge. Let's go. 130 hit points. Let's see. I want to make him nice and big. No, I guess, yeah, this is just the best way to do it. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. 130 HP. But... It's not always 130 HP because of the adrenaline power ability. Wait, why does my Twitch say I'm offline? I'm online, right? Yeah, I'm online. The back end of my Twitch, look at that. It says I'm offline. It's messed up. <laughs> I'm not offline. I'm online. Anyways, carrying on. Hundred 
130 HP. It's got the adrenaline power ability. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon has any darkness energy attached to it, it gets plus 100 HP. And its attacks do 100 more damage. Now that... That... Right there is an ability, bro. That's one... That's an ability. Hot dang. Any darkness energy attached. That means it does not have to be basic darkness energy. That means it can be special energy. That means if you have an Aurora energy attached to it, then you can use Oki Punchy for 170 damage with your Pokemon that has 170 HP. If you have a Luminous energy, yes, Rainbow, whatever it is, any of these special energy that provide a Rainbow effect, right? They provide the fighting and the darkness. So you can give your Okie Dogi 230 hit points. Yeah, counter energy is less good because if you use counter energy to pay for the attack and you're behind on prizes, right? And then you tie it up with the attack by doing 170. Then you tie it up. You turn off counter energy. Then your opponent only has to do 130 damage. So it's way better to have a... No, it's not 170 for three. It's 170 for two if you have a Luminous, right? You could do Luminous Fighting. No, you could do it for two energy. Yeah, Luminous Energy is every type simultaneously. Okay, all, all right. Oh, do we have to do a lesson on special energy? I'm sorry. It is confusing. It is confusing, but it works. All right. We're going to have to dial it back. Okay. Yes. All right. It, it's confusing because as you see, as long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, it provides every type of energy... Every type. It provides every type. Period. But only provides one energy at a time. That means one count. Not one type of energy at a time. You all are... Those of you that are confused, you are reading this as if it said it only provides one type of energy at a time. But that's not what it says. It says it provides one energy at a time. That one means one singleton energy that provides all types of energy. Understand? Does that clear things up? Thank you, Secluded Loaf. Right? Does that clear things up for anybody who was confused, right? You, you, were, you were probably trying to read this as if it said it only provides one type of energy at a time, but that's not what it says. It says it provides one energy at a time. So it counts as one singleton energy that provides all types of energies at the same time. That's what it says. Got it? So what that means... What that means, if you have a luminous energy on your Ogie Dogie... If you have a luminous energy and a fighting energy... The luminous energy provides all types of energy at the same time. It provides the dark and the fighting at the same time. Meaning that you can Oki Punchy for 170 and you can have 230 hit points with just two energy attached. Got it? Which is busted. That rocks. Yeah, it's so good. In, you know, Gym Leader Challenge. Probably not in standard. But I mean, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Probably not. But maybe. Is that an official ruling? Yeah. It's been that way since the dawn of time. Also, it's not... It doesn't have to be an official ruling. That's what the card says. It it just... It says that. Yeah. Because it says it provides one energy at a time. Not one energy type at a time. It literally says in the previous statement it provides every type of energy. It literally says that right there. Every type of energy, but only one energy, not energy type, only one energy at a time. 
There's a difference between energy type and energy. Excellent. But it's been this way. It's been this way since the beginning of time. Ever since Rainbow Energy was printed in Team Rocket. Sorry, Gardas, but yes. The Rulings Compendium. For those of you who have trust issues. If I use Tinkaton's Alloyed Hammer Attack with only one Luminous Energy attached, does it do 60 or 180 damage? The Luminous Energy pays for the Psychic Attack, but also counts as all types of energy, including metal. So you would do the bonus damage. Yep. Boom. There you go. Very good. Yes, Pock and Gym Leader Challenge, you can play whatever special energy or energy you want. You can play whatever kind of energy you want. It's just the Pokemon are type limited. That's it. And special energy are limited to one of each in a deck. There's Singleton as well. So yeah, Okie Dogie is kind of insane. This card seems great. No, this card's not going to get banned in Gym Leader Challenge. Listen, you know how much you know you know how much you know how much help fighting decks need. <laughs> mean, this is the best news for fighting type decks in a long time. Yes, you know how much help they need, bro. They need so much help. <laughs> this is just the first step, man. This in Ting Lu, man, this this set has been a dream. A dream for fighting type gym leader challenge decks. Yeah. Ting Lu and then Ogie Dogi? Man. Alright, well now I need now I know that I absolutely need to win with the fire deck at Gym Leader Challenge League before the next set comes out because the next set has got fighting and dragon hype all baked in. So there's no help for fire on the horizon. It's not getting any better. <laughs> so I need to win with fire now. Yes. Now this thing's insane. 230 HP. So in Gym Leader Challenge, if you want to deal with this, Hex Maniac is obviously very good. You can hit it for weakness with Psychic. Enhanced Hammer can remove the energy, decrease its HP. You could play Canceling Cologne to turn it off. Oh, this is a mistranslation. The once during your turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not supposed to be once during your turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's a mistranslation. Bug catching sets. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. You may choose up to two in any combination of grass and basic grass energy cards you find there. Reveal them, put them into your hand. It's it's not bad. This is interesting because it's like the most great ball adjacent card that seems like actually kind of good, right? And let's not get it twisted. Great ball is bad. But it still sees play in degenerate decks like Lugia. <laughs> that have no other, you know, just no other better choice, right? But this card is, like, not bad. Seven, you get to pick, it gets you energy and Pokemon? That's not terrible. Right? It's pretty good. Wait, it's a supporter? No, that's an item. It's an item, right? No, that's a... They just goofed that up? That's an item, right? It's not a supporter. Tell me it's not a supporter. It's an item. All right, all right. They goofed that up. It's an item, guys. It's an item. It's an item. It's an item. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. It's item, 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 item. All right, all right. I was going to say, this is like the worst supporter ever if it's a supporter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's an item. And it's not bad. The fact that it gets energy, I mean if you think about like cards like Energy Lotto have been good in the past, right? I mean this card's like not bad and Part of what makes this card not bad is that it can get special energy, right? But this isn't like the worst card ever. It actually has seen some play. And similarly, Great Ball is like not the worst card ever and has seen some play. So then for Grass decks, this card is just a good card, right? I mean, really, you kind of got like two mid cards combined into one like one pretty good card. I'm not going to compare it to Pokegear because Pokegear gets supporters. That's different. But this gets energy and Pokemon, which is a combination of energy lotto and great ball. Yeah. And it's got a sick theme to it. Yeah, I got to say the theme is on point. All right, people are going to want me to talk about Ogre Pond when it comes to this. All right, so all you Ogre Pond, you Ogre Pond heads out there. Where are you at? Are you here? Here. All right, all you Ogre Pond people. I still, even with the bug catching set, I'm still not convinced that Gardenia is. Man, Gardenia, dude? Come on. No, not Gardenia. Not Gardenia, man. Yeah, one for two is always good. Not Gardenia. No. Not Gardenia. Have you read Gardenia? <laughs> <laughs> you know it only draws two cards, right? You know it only draws two, right? It's just two cards. Just make sure we're all reading the same card. Draws two. All right, draws two. Not three. Not four. Two. Teal draws cards. You know it only goes to the bench, right? Just to the bench. It only goes to the bench. We know about all that. All right. Maybe. Maybe. All right. I'll give it a maybe. I, I, I guess there's probably no better way to play it. Nick Rosie, I'm going to put you in timeout. <laughs> I'm going to put you in the corner, Nick. <laughs> I'm going to put you in the corner. <laughs> you keep this up. All right. Ogre Pond. I'm going to be honest with you. If I'm building the Ogre Pond deck, I guess we, we probably have to put Gardenia in it, huh? All right, fine. You probably just have to put Gardenia in it. Because there's nothing else. What else are we doing? We got to get the grass energy into play. You could run energy switches, but that doesn't feel quite as good either. Man, I guess. Yeah, Gardenia makes Sada look broken. You could play Pokestops and Energy Retrievals. Yeah, that makes sense because you probably want a Pokestop and then you can get your little, you know, your switcheroo guy too off Pokestop. That's nice. 
I didn't read him. He's pretty bad, though, right? Search your deck for two basic energy cards. Real input in your hand. Ogre comeback. Yeah, he's not very good. You play maybe two of them, like, uh, like I mean, it does kind of weirdly feel like Sada, right? Guys, just think about how much better Sada is than Gardenia, all right? Think about how Sada is so much better. <laughs> Sada is so much better, dude. It's so much better. <laughs> and Sada's like already not the best. Do you understand? All right. I'm trying to think of Gardenia as like a card like Blacksmith, that it just doesn't draw any cards. And and I guess I guess it could it could see play. Kieran, switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon, or during this turn, your opponent's uh, your Pokemon's attacks do thirty more damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon EX or Pokemon V. That's pretty cool. I love these dual type. Supporters is just really neat. Love that. You know, you can choose your own adventure type of thing. I'm not above playing a supporter card that just is a little switcheroo. It's like Kakui and Tate and Liza. It's like Kakui and oh oh who's the who's the lady who's the lady. Her name starts with an O. Olympia. It's like Olympia. I used to play Olympia in my Evelta Lee X deck. Never heard of her? I don't know what game she's from. I'm assuming X and Y because it's from that generation. But I don't know what part of the game. Is she a gym leader? Is she a... Is she an Elite Four member? She's a gym leader. That's cool. But yeah, I used to play Yveltal in uh, in my Garboder deck. I used to play Olympia in my Yveltal Garboder deck. But back then you had Versus Seeker. So it was like, you could play one of supporters like that And you would just verse a seeker, you know, on the turn that you needed to use it, you just verse seeker. And then Carmine. And then it's like, oh, I guess Kieran's like a Leon too, you know? It's like it's like Leon and it's like Olympia. It's kind of neat. It's funny because like the two effects, the two effects aren't really related. I don't know, switching and doing 30 more damage. They're kind of like two very separate attacks. You could imagine supporters that just do those two separate things. Now this supporter rocks. Carmine... If you go first, you can play it. Discard your hand, draw five. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. All right. That's a good supporter right there. You can play it turn one. My goodness. That's a good supporter. This is the most powerful turn one supporter that they... This is the most powerful turn one going for a supporter that they've ever printed. Not close. The next the next best one is like literally beauty. <laughs> beauty. 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 No, I'm talking about supporters that they allow you to play turn one going first. 
B E A U T F O Beauty. Yes. Are these the only two? Is there another one? Is there Parasol Lady? Oh no, that's different. This is this is different. No, I'm talking about supporters you can play turn one going first. I, I think it's just the best one, right? Like not I mean it's obviously the best one, but I mean how many even are there? I'm talking about supporters that can be played turn one going first. I'm talking about I'm talking about since the rule change. Supporters that could be played turn one going first. I think they're the only two. Yeah, it's just Carmine and Beauty. Yeah. You know what that means? My expanded dunk deck about to go crazy. <laughs> You know what that means, chat. All right. Bust out the expanded dunk deck. Come on. We're popping off. You can't play this rest of the game? Yes, you can. It doesn't say you can only play this card if you go f if it's your first turn. It just says you can play this card. The fact that you can play it the rest of the game is an, an assumed quantity. I'm on PokemonProxies.com. Yeah, you can play Karma in any turn. They ban scoop up net, or we're gonna have to get in the lab with our donk deck. Yeah, a nerfed research is still kind of sick. It is, right? I mean, there are certain decks that that I think would love something like this. People were saying Lugia is so bad. I mean, yeah, right? Like you don't need a ton of cards in Lugia. You just need to be able to pop off. Thank you, Sonny. We need a group of people to cosplay all the ogre pots. My goodness. It's a bad deck, but I'm excited for my cast form GLC deck. Well, you know what? That is very true. This is very good for the cast form GLC deck. Also, I don't like some GLC decks won't hate having this. But yeah, you could definitely play it in Lugia. Asking the real questions. Where's our Bridget uh, going first supporter? Oh, they already released it. It's called Buddy Buddy Poffin. Good question, though. Yes. Yes, it's Buddy Buddy Poffin. They've decided... It seems to me like they have decided that... They're just going item. They're going they're going items instead of supporter for your setup cards, right? That's why they printed cards like Battle VIP Pass. That's why they printed Buddy Buddy Poffin. They're just like, you know, Nest Ball, all that. They're just it seems to be like that's the way the game design's going. Uh they did print um what, the guy who gets you three Pokemon with uh Less than 120 hit points. They did print that. But, yeah, Clavel. And Clavel's not bad in Gym Leader Challenge. It's funny that those kinds of cards, like, if I was like, hey, let's think about putting Clavel in our standard deck, right? Like, you wouldn't... Like, this card... These cards are so underpowered that they would never see play in standard, right? So it's like obvious that 
when it comes to designing for standard, they're just they're much more, you know, they're they're doing buddy buddy poffin. That's the that's the de design philosophy for standard now. These cards exist, but for what reason I don't really know. We do play them in gym leader challenge though. But this would be so much better if you could play it turn one going first. My goodness, I do I do kind of just wish that they'd put the like you could play this going first clause on these cards. Like why not, right? Why Why not? Why not let us play Clovel turn one going first? Is it that broken? Like, why not? Like, cards like this, that that it would be one of my biggest questions for the people who design the cards over at Creatures. Like, why, why can't I play Clovel turn one going first? Huh? Why? Please. All right, that's it for all the new cards. Cool. Good discussion. Lots of new cards to talk about. I'm going to be getting, um, you know, some boxes of those Twilight cards. Not Twilight, of the Crimson Haze cards. Yes, I'm going to be getting some booster boxes of Crimson Haze in the upcoming weeks. Oh, we got some nice art rares there. Yeah, this Greninja goes crazy. But yeah, all right. It's about time to play some Pokemon Trading Card Game Live. Hang tight. I'll be right back. After this break, we're going to game. Thank you all so much for being here.
Yo, what's up? We back. Thank you for the patience. Well, let's go. Game time. You know, I just noticed that she's taking a picture of a Hisuian Growlithe. How cute is that? Aww. Look at that. You see it in the lens. Just noticed that. Fun. Look. Look how clean my desktop is. I did some deep cleaning yesterday. By deep cleaning, I mean I just deleted a whole bunch of stuff. Go back to the Growlithe? Why do I have to go back to the Growlithe? It's just a Growlithe, right? Is it here? Where is it? Is it here? It's gone now, chat. It's gone. I'll never see it again. There it is. Oh! Fun! See? And there she is. Aww! Aww! No, oh, he's so nice. Yeah, that's the that's the picture. There you go. Fun. All right, I got one more maintenance. When is this? O three nineteen. Is that on Tuesday? They always do maintenance on Tuesday. Is that a Tuesday? Or is it on Monday? It's Tuesday. All right, we're going to have maintenance on Tuesday. Okay. All right. Did I hear about twinleaf.gg got announced? Oh yeah. Where did it get announced? Tuesday tabletop day? Mayhaps. I'll figure out something to do. Tuesday, yeah, we'll we'll have to do some tabletop then. That sounds good. I got one more tournament left in this format. It is the Vancouver Regional Championships next weekend. So I'm definitely trying to stream that Tuesday because I'm going away to Vancouver. Uh, I won't be there. Oh, man, doesn't the set come out on, like, I'm going to miss set release day? Man. It has been announced the 15th. Yeah, I guess I'm just now putting this together, but I guess I won't be around for a set release day on TCG Live, which kind of stinks. Well, because I'm going to be in Vancouver. Oh, sick. I'm playing against Control. This rocks. No, Full Grip will not be a Vancouver. Full Grip's never vended an international regional. Man, that's a bummer. Dang. Oh, well. So I'll, uh... I'll probably vlog my experience in Vancouver, though. That way I get some content out of it. 
All right, I can retreat. This is great. Slot a rip. Control deck, huh? We got ourselves a control matchup. Yeah, that was kind of an ugly discard. I had to get rid of four seal stone, dark patch. Don't love that. This matchup is going to be bad. I suspect. Well, I don't want to get Radiant Greninja. I don't want to get Squawkbilly. If I just get Squawkbilly, I'm pretty sure I like lose. But I guess I kind of have to get Squawkbilly, huh? I mean, the deck only plays two Switch cards. One of them's prized. But they'll have plenty of cards for me to gust. So I guess that's okay. So that's fine, because this is one of those decks that's not like a quad Snorlax deck, I don't think. I'm also thinking about getting more Peko. I mean, I've already got Squawk, so it doesn't matter to have a just because it's two energy attacks, so it might be easier to, for me to like fire off an attack with more Pekka this turn. It's literally the only reason we have it. All right. Um, I think I do want to just knock out this active if I can. So if I had hit that heads, maybe I would have gusted up Pidgey and gone for more Pekka, but I didn't. So attach here, restart for two. Oh, we got a dark patch. Palpad back in. Boss. Sada. Dark Patch. Squawk. If I find Energy Switch or a Dark Patch, then I have it. All right. We do find Energy Switches. So I've got the turn one attack, which is great. I got a Stadium. Um... Do I want to knock myself out? It's kind of an interesting question. Like, I could gouge twice, which is kind of cool, and just KO myself. So, I think I'll... I think I'll do that. <laughs> that's, that's fine. Sure. One of my opening temporal forces, well, I don't know. Pokemon Company didn't send me any this time, so probably just going to not open any because it really only makes sense to open it on the channel if I can open it early, and since they didn't send me any uh, this time, I don't have any to open early, so... Kind of a... Weird situation. I did open some. Oh, yeah. I did do some from the midnight pre-release stream. Yep. I did do that. But I can't, like, open a... I and mean, I guess it's, like, it's technically, like... The set's not technically out yet, so technically I'm not allowed to open a Temporal Forces booster box. <laughs> like, on stream. Just, like, just cause, right? The pre-release VOD should be up or should be going up soon. Yes, I can on Monday, yes. Maybe I'll open... Uh, maybe I'll open Temporal Forces on Tuesday while TCG Live is down. So maybe we do that. That could be fun. I gotta think of you know what I'm gonna do on that day anyway. 
All right, so this would be a good opportunity to hit heads on Pokemon Catcher. Do it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to bring out the Pidgeot. <laughs> you know that thing you worked really hard on? You know, the whole Pidgeot situation? Yeah. How about that? I would love to take that. Thank you. Okay, grab those. All right. Friends in gouging. Doesn't this like not even, it prevents damage, but not. Dang, this matchup kind of goes crazy. <laughs> uh, okay. Sure. If they Gus KO Moltres, I'm in a bad spot. I guess. But not really. I could find another basic. We're chilling. They're gonna counter catch up my Moltres, knock it out. Yeah, of course that's what they're gonna do. But then they'll be at two prizes. Huh. Yeah, what if they just win, bro? No, they're gonna win. Ah, okay. Oh, I'm a fool. They're going to win not by milling me, by taking the knockouts. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I see. I see the error in my ways. All right, let's go. Take that. Take that. Oh, that's very good. Okay, I've got all these energy switches. It needs to be... Okay. Ultra Ball away these. Get Moltres. Oh yeah, this deck's broken. Dark Patch. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Pump Fake. Pump Fake. Come on, baby. We got it. We got it, bro. Come on. Come on. Give me that boss's orders. That's not it. <laughs> it's really not it. Come on, man. Pokemon catcher. Oh, this is so sad. All right. <laughs> All right. I don't think it's correct to... Yeah, we're just going to leave more Peko active. Yeah, yeah. we we'll definitely leave more Peko active. All right. Pass. And they can't counter catch her. Right, 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 right. Yeah, we're chilling. We're chilling. We're chilling. We don't, we definitely don't attack with Moltres. So that's the easiest way to lose. I didn't discard the boss's orders either, so that's good. Yes, Astro Monkey, the Dragon Shield over sleeves, definitely. Check them out. The clear outer the the outer sleeves. They have clear and black. Definitely check out the outer sleeves. Uh Dragon Shield makes some really nice outer sleeves. Definitely recommend them. Oh, well now I lose. Oh, never mind. Wrote them so back. Now I lose. Oh, man. All right. Do they play boss's orders in that deck? Nice. I own to two. This is cracked. 
Oh, and I got the boss, bro. Um. Got Pokemon Catcher. I think attempt Pokemon Catcher. Oh yeah. And I think we just take the I think we just take it right here. I think. And then I have if they don't like have it. I think. We're like chilling, right? I think. That was crazy. Yeah, that was good. That was good. The horn, that does nothing. Iona to two, that's right. Control decks don't like to get Iona to two with no Pidgeot in play. That's for sure. And if they don't have Countercatcher, it's GG's, dude. Yup. GG's, bro. Roxanne, what? No! You've got to be kidding me! <laughs> What's the point of I own order two? What's the point? What's the point? <laughs> If I knew I was just going to Iono to two and give them Roxanne, Rare Candy, Pidgeot. Oh, my gosh. And, of course. All right. Now they've got Pidgeot in play, so they can just win. This is disastrous. Are there no energy left in the deck? Oh, I just lose. And I can't I can't knock anything out. I've got no energy left in the deck. I'm out of gas. This is horrible. This is terrible, dude. That was my last energy in deck. Oh, I'm so bodied. I'm not knocking anything out. They guaranteed counter catcher next turn. Got one prize remaining. I can't knock out any of this stuff. But they can quick search. They can quick search out of it. It has to be boss Pidgeot and go for a two hit KO. But then they can just literally go quick search for fire and I lose. Oh my gosh. So bad. We're so cooked, bro. They could just go get Penny. Fiji, I can retreat. Yeah, but then I have to find my catcher. Everything else they can Penny. Or they're probably just going to win with Charizard Fire here. But. Yes. See? 
Gosh, that's crazy. All right, all right. So I made a crucial error this game by knocking myself out, which seems good against normal control decks. However, against this Pidgeot Charizard deck, they're taking six prizes. So, like, you never do that against Pidgeot Charizard. And now I think I've kind of learned that lesson the hard way. Nah, you don't knock yourself out against that deck, right? Against, like, a, a typical Snorlax stall deck, yeah. But that's my first time playing against the Pidgeot version. Like, the, the Pidgeot with only, like, one Snorlax in it. Like, that deck takes all six prizes. Which was my my mistake. Granted, we did Iono them into the stone-cold nuts, but that's okay. Which you hate to see. That's okay, though. Is Garchomp EX a viable deck? Garchomp EX isn't very good in standard right now, unfortunately. It's not, uh, not great. It just doesn't really do enough. What deck, what deck am I most excited for post-rotation? deck that I'm most excited for, I mean, it's tough because there's not a lot of new decks that are really good post-rotation, but funny enough, the new deck that I'm most excited about post-rotation is actually Ancient Box, and I think that, I think that I was a little bit wrong about it. I think that Ancient Box is a lot better than I may have given it credit for. Yeah, Dino Box, yeah. I'm talking about new decks, JW. Yes, yes, new decks, new decks. I'm not, like, excited for Chen Pao, okay? I, I'm just not. I'm not excited for Chen Pao. Chen Pao exists now. I'm not, like, excited about it. No, I bet you Dino Box ends up... I. I think Dino Box will end up seeing success just like just like Reggie. I think it may end up occupying like a similar space. Man, I really wanted to hit that catcher heads. Yeah, I I, I do get to go to EYC. I'm very, very excited about that. Really wanted that one to be a heads. So that then I could earn the vessel away this catcher and still have an opportunity to go for the Raikou turn one. Yeah, I gotta bench this. And it's just it's gotta be earn the vessel away the catcher, unfortunately. I do think that your yeah, Baxcalibur is really good. Charizard's really good. Lugia is good. Lost Antina is good. Arceus is really good. Ooh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's good. That's real good. Okay. Yo, are we goaded? No, actually. We're not. So sad. Do I play Cabalion and Ancient Box for the Zard? It is difficult to get to that much damage, but I don't think you can play Cabalion because it's got a retreat cost of two, right? But it is possible with Ancient Box to get it's it's possible to get to 330 you go few, yeah you gotta go for Squawk here yeah it is possible to get to in one of my testing games the other night 
I did 350 with Ancient Box, with Dino Box. 350, bro. I did 350. Oh, my squawk. Where's my squawk? Why didn't I get the squawk? That's all good. Was the squawk in the deck? Squawk was in the deck. Was I just literally like, yeah, that's cool though. All right. It was. I meant to grab it. I just, uh, I think I forgot what I was doing. It's cool though. This is actually the optimal play. Yeah, no liabilities on my bench, dog. <laughs> yeah, no liabilities for me, dude. I'm just drawing with Mew EX. There we go. You know, Nerdy Pops, I think Future Box gets even better when the uh, Iron Thorns EX comes out. Jester, in the game that I played uh, with Dino Box, I reached 350 at the end of the game, but I... I last prized my counter catcher that would have won me the game. So since then, I've bumped up to four counter catchers. So I do think that Dino Box kind of needs to play four counter catchers. You just need to be gusting every turn. You need to be able to like perfectly map out your prizes. Ogre Pond, Iron Leaves, I mean, that's fine. But who's really doing a lot of damage, right? Dang, I really should have grabbed the Squawk. <laughs> I can't believe that I just goofed like that. That's okay. We're vibing, honestly. Am I going to gouge? Might have to gouge. That would be devastating. Or I could shame scoop. There's that too. Yeah, we'll just shame scoop. All right. I was too too excited talking about Dino Box. I wasn't locked in, bro. I got to lock in. All right, time to lock in. Locking in. That's me locking in. I, th I think Dino Box is like actually pretty good, dude. Oh, nice. I'm playing against the same person. Revenge. Let's do some predictions. Just stop playing live and get out my Dino Box. I got the Dino Box right here. I got it right here. I think Dino Box is good. I do. I've come around. I'm a believer now. Hold on, let me beat this guy real quick. I need to redeem my ah, it's lost box again though. This matchup is is trash. No, Roaring Moon can hit 350 damage. I didn't realize it. Okay. I didn't realize it at the time. It seems so bad. You realize it says 10 plus 70 plus 10 more for each ancient card in the discard pile. That's terrible, but it's possible. You just got to you got to believe enough. Yeah. The Dino Box deck thrives on pure belief energy. Well, also, you ha you like have to be good at playing the Dino Box deck too. You can't just like be a numbskull. Like you gotta actually, 
you got to navigate it right. Like, you can't overbench. That was, like, a very quick realization. You can't, like... One of the biggest mistakes to make with a Dino Box deck is filling your bench to try and do the most amount of damage you can with Coridon. That's, like... That's not usually something you're doing. Usually, Coridon's there to punch for, like, 90. 120 max. You're never trying to do, like... Almost never trying to do 180 with with Karidon. Because then you won't be able to get those one-hit KOs that you want at the end of the game. Why, yes, I would love a judge. Thank you. What do you guys say that I, you know, what if what if we get out like our squawkabilly this game? What do you think? Squawkabilly? I'll actually get Squawkabilly out. That seems reasonable. But I've got this dark patch in my hand, and I've got the darkness energy. So I really don't want Squawkabilly yet. I really want, like, him. And then I ideally I want to find... I want to find the Squawkabilly off this judge. We'll find it. Trust. See? There you go. Easy peasy. Okay. Dark patch. I can save the earthen vessel in the deck. Because there's not really anything to get here. It'd be good to catch her up to Greninja, I think. Eh. I'll go one. Sure. And then just judge. Okay. We got Ultra Ball, which means that we can Star Alchemy for Vessel, Ultra Ball for Squawk. Yeah. But then if we don't find the switch, we're not attacking, right? That's kind of like what we have to do. Kind of like that. It's fine. I think. It's tough to say. Starting the Roaring Moon stinks. It's all good. Kaka. Nah, we got nothing here. Man. Okay. Dire Flame Wings. And we just got to pass. Yeah, I could talk about Dino Box a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Dino Box after I'm done playing some live. Because I do think that... I know, JW is a hater. JW thinks the Dino Box deck is terrible. And I can't really blame him because so did I. Maybe it's just because I'm so tired of playing V-Stars. And you know what? And I'm so tired of all these standard decks and I just, I'm just i just craving something new. And it might just be that. It might. Is there any Dark Patch in there? No. How are you, how you hitting 350 damage if you got non-Ancient cards? It's, it's all Ancient cards, bro. The deck's crazy. All right. My judge at least stuck a little bit. They didn't do too much.
Okay. You don't need that many energy switch. That's fine. It's cool, man. Copy their ninja. Ayo. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, bro. <laughs> sure. Maybe I will. Oh, yeah, this deck's broken. What the heck, dude? I think Dino... I think Dino Box is just one of those decks where, like, you kind of just have to be a Dino head, though. So part of me is like ready to be a dino head. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to swallow a little bit of my pride. I'm going to have to admit that I was very wrong if it ends up being good. But that's, you know what? And if it ends up being bad, then I'm going to be like, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Roaring Moon, the card reads so bad. I don't blame myself for rating it poorly. The card reads like trash. And the deck is still a pile. You have to play all these ancient cards in it. But I think I'm just so fed up with other decks in the format that I'm giving it a chance. My turn. Yo, they they got the Greninja back out. Dude. Come on. They got the the Greninja's back. Let's do it again. ADP, I'll defend on Omnipoke here. ADP was bad when it was released. It only got broken once, once Zashin came out. Okay. God, we're so close. Dang it, we're so close. Okay. It's fine. God. Okay. You retreat, take the knockout with Moltres. Energy switch on to Mew so that it's live for next turn. Yeah. Was I there if catcher hits? Nah, I needed to move the, the Roaring Moon. No, no, no. I wasn't there. They're swimming in VIP passes now, which is pretty funny.
gosh, that early judge did just, I mean, just look at how much it was able to do. It's crazy. Man, I was just sorting this dino box deck, and then I just started riffling it. Some of dingus. I was just sorting it. I think that one thing that uh, that that people... One thing that I really like in the Dino Box list that I've been playing with is I think the deck needs an Ultra Ball or two. I think two. Yeah. You got to have some other way to get dudes in the discard pile. I think two Ultra Ball. Two Ultra Ball is fine. You don't really... I'm not sure that like four makes sense, but two is two is like good. It doesn't play Ultra Ball already. Well, not every list that I've seen from Japan plays plays Ultra Ball. I got three flutters just to help hit the numbers. Three flutters, two Slitherwing, and then four four of the other two, and a Greninja. No, no research. The only supporters are Sadas. Oh, there's a moon. There's a moon over there. <laughs> sure. You like have to play enough ancient cards. Uh, you have to play enough ancient cards to be able to hit the big numbers at the end of the game. I think that it's better to just play like slightly higher ancient card count than it is to play. Um, than it is to play like Defiance Band, personally. You could play like a Defiance Band, but then that's like another non-ancient card that's in the deck. Which I don't love. I do think that the deck... if I think that the deck played at its best is just like a ton of ancient cards. But, you know, I could be convinced otherwise, though. I like I, That's why I don't like Dark Patch either. Like, just, just lean into it, right? If you're doing the Dino Box thing, like, just, just lean in. All the way. Lean in all the way. All the ancient cards. Put them all in the deck. You know, try to hit those. And I think that... With the way that I... Yeah, with the way that I've been... Like, 280 is so easy to hit, right? With the way that I have it, and I've been playing it, it's like 280 feels like a breeze. 330 feels like uh you know maybe at the at the end of the game you can hit it right but i think like if you're playing against charizard pidgeot all you need is to be able to hit 280 sometime in the mid game and then all you need is a 330 once for game right like that's the goal of the deck is to just hit 330 once for game that's it so like you just have to play enough ancient cards to get you to that number period and you have to play enough counter catchers to make sure that you're always hitting the right Pokemon at the end. Because it's a deck that will go down to like, it will go down to like the final prize. Like almost every single game. Oh, we got ourselves a cool matchup here. I want to put my Ancient Box deck away and actually sweat this one out. I don't have Mill in the, uh, the Tusk Mill guy in the list because he's got a heavy retreat cost. That's like a 
I mean, there's no switch cards in the deck, right? So you want to be careful with who you put in the deck. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Broken deck. I want Squawk. I want the more Pekko. Who do we want to knock out? Turn one. Gimme Ghoul. Come on, man. It's all right. We're just saving those heads for later. Two energy in the discard pile. I can go a third in the discard pile. Okay, restarts. Okay. Who needs Ultra Balls anyway? Kaka! Oh, well, you definitely... No, that's what I was saying. Uh, Kiro, you don't fill your bench early. That's like a misplay with Dino Box. Don't... I think it's like a common thing. People want to do the most amount of damage possible with the dinosaur. Don't. Like, the dinosaur's only there to do 120 damage. Like, don't try to do more than 120. You got to keep your bench narrow so that at the end of the game, you only have, like, your two, uh, your two Roaring Moon, and then you, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Most of the ancient Pokemon are just there to be discarded. Precisely, yes. Exactly correct. I could no, see that's the thing, is like gusting up the Radiant Greninja and doing that play won't matter because they're gonna evolve those into golden goes, right? So like that's not actually gonna help. Yeah, we just want one energy. Oh, you were replying to someone in chat. All right, cool, cool, cool. I don't actually want to give them this Pokestop if I can help it. We're bound to hit one. Okay. Man, drawing cards feels broken. <laughs> Anybody else like drawing cards, man? I like I like drawing cards. Drawing cards feels good. Roaring moon. Wow. Look at me go. Yeah, three Coridon. I could see it. Coridon's not that good. <laughs> like, Coridon's fine. It's just there to soften things up. The way I look at Coridon is this. Like, you're playing... Coridon's the lead most of the time, right? But you can, like, knock out... If your opponent's got, like, a 70 hit point active, you can knock that out. Easy. But then if your opponent takes a knockout then you can counter catcher and knock out a Pokemon with like 100 hit points or less, right? Like, you can, you, you're very selective with your counter catchers and you use the Coridons to do like about 120 damage and you go counter catcher, counter catcher with Coridon, get yourself down to four prizes remaining and then Roaring Moon goes boom, boom, knockout, knockout game, right? That's, that's like the game plan. You might attack with Coridon three times. You might take a single prizer with Coridon, take another single prizer, prizer with Coridon, soften up a two prizer, and then you go boom, boom, roaring moon, game, game. You know, knockout, knockout game. That's like, 
that's kind of like the tempo of the deck from what I've been what I've been gathering from it. But so what that means is you don't need any more than three Karidon. So you shouldn't fill your bench. Like really. You gotta be very careful not to. Like definitely don't get out too many Karidon. Because you need to have those dudes in the discard pile. Late game running out of cards. Well, you have to play very carefully too, right? You do have to play very carefully. Do I just, like, how does this matchup go? Do you just, like, try to win the trade, I guess? Like, win the win the race? I guess so, right? Like, we're just going to try and go moon, moon, moon. I guess it's still it's always correct to just take the two prizer. I think. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Just making sure though. Yeah. Okay. And then as far as energy, yeah, I can get one in the discard pile, that's cool. And there's nothing I want to energy switch to. All right. Keep that. Sure, I'll keep that too. I can both stop that. Okay. Dire flame wings, get a couple energy over this other moon. I guess it's tough if they like gust up. Because I'm about to gouge. If they like, I'll stop this one and hit it. That's like a little tough, but. Coin toss KO? I've never flipped more than one heads on coin toss. It's not possible. It's fine. If my opponent goes coin toss KO, then I just go. Knock, I still, I'm on a two-turn clock. Like, I'm still winning the race regardless. It doesn't really matter because I'm on an odd prize count, right? So. It's still... It's still the same... But yeah, I'm in, I'm interested to to see what you guys think about Dinobox. I do kind of have to get I have to get like a, one more nest ball in this deck, I think. But I don't want to find room for it. Also, JW thinks the trekking shoes are bad. No way. Trekking shoes are goaded, dude. Trekking shoes are goaded, bro. We need a stream where we refine lists. Well, that makes sense for Tuesday because TCG Live is going to be down on Tuesday. So it definitely seems like a Tuesday kind of activity, huh? Okay. No shoes? The shoes? It's like the whole point. You want to get to the bottom of the deck? I'm not playing Brute Bonnet because it's got it's too fat. That's the thing, is like you can't have a guy who has too high of a retreat cost, because then you gotta play switch, right? And you just don't wanna have to play switch. That's like kind of the whole thing. Oh yeah, I've got him. Oh, we win. Right now I'm at three trekking shoes. Because I wanted to fit one more ancient Pokemon. I, I took out, I think, the fourth trekking shoe for the third. 
Um, for the third uh, Flutter main or whatever. Great Tusk has a is like a retreat cost of like four though, or three. I mean, it's like it's way too fat. Then you got to play switch cards or just never open it, which is like too much of an ask, I think. Do you just admit defeat to stall? I don't think that the deck has a great time against stall, no. Like Slitherwing has a retreat cost of three, but he's still got a two energy attack and will just knock himself out. So that's fine. You don't have to play switch cards. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have to play switch cards. Switch cards don't say ancient on them. Why would we play switch cards? It's not an ancient card. You do not have to play switch cards, dude. No, you don't. What do you got to switch for? Like, if you play some fatties, then you have to switch. Nah, you just play play some heads up baseball, dude. You just just play heads up. You can also just retreat in a pinch. It's not a bit. It's not. It's not terrible. Double Cabalion, <laughs> good God. Your opponent has an attack and makes it so you can't retreat. Yeah, well, all of your guys can attack, except for Radiant Greninja, so don't put him into play. Well, how many switch are you playing there, JD? Like, you're going to play one switch and open it? No. Right? No, I play no rescue board. Does that card say ancient on it? You could play one rescue. I would rather play one rescue board than a switch. That is a card that I've actually thought about playing. Because you could put it, just put it on your Radiant Greninja when you see it, right? Sure, we'll go to Limitless Deck Builder, sure. All right, let's go. I am definitely preoccupied thinking about Dino Box now, so we might as well might as well go talk about it. All right, let's talk about the dinosaurs. Finally. All right, how do you how do you build a deck here? Deck builder? Wow. Okay. This card's good. So the list that I'm playing originally started off with four Nest Ball. Then I cut to three Nest Ball, one Ultra Ball. Then now I'm at two Nest Ball, two Ultra Ball. But I think that that number's kind of in flux for me. No Pokestop? No. Cause you don't want to discard your stuff, really. I mean you don't want to discard like your good your valuable stuff, right? Uh the earthen vessel. 
That's the point. Well, no, no, no. Like the you'll find like your four Sada's vitality are like the most important cards in the deck. Like even having to waste a Sada for like just one energy feels so bad. Like you need. I used to have Hisuian Heavy in here, but I think I cut it for just another. I cut it for one more Ancient card because I was like. What's the point? You know, you just have another ancient card. Like, who cares? Yeah, I got shoes. I got three shoes. But I guess, like, yeah, you could go two artisan, one heavy. I mean, that's that's marginal. That's like a that's a small difference. The four counter catcher, though, I'm going to four counter catcher, four gear. Yeah. Counter catcher that counter catcher like has to be four, I think, because you can just lose games. Like if you get into a situation where you explorers and have to discard a counter catcher early and you're only playing three, that's just a game losing situation. Right. I also have had game losing situations where like if you pl if you only play three and you prize one, that's a game losing situation. Right. So like you kind of you kind of like have to play four, I think. That's been my my deduction from my early testing. Three is like good. Three is perfect if you never have to waste one and never prize one. But if you like if you prize one, three's not enough. Into booster, gears, one rod, yeah. One rod is enough, I think. Like you definitely get down to the to the gritty end. And you don't want to prize your one rod, but like two rod seems unnecessary. Just be care be careful, right? Just gotta be careful. It's definitely the theme of the deck. Like you have to be careful. It's funny because, like, it seems like the kind of deck, like, you could play, like, a 35-minute, a long 35-minute game one and barely win. Right? But then you could also play a long 35-minute game one and, like, prize your, your one counter catcher you need for game and just lose, and then you lose the whole set, right? So, yeah, see, Benguin, that kind of stuff, exactly, right? Your first playthrough with the deck, you accidentally rotted a moon back in, it was 10 damage short for a KO. Yeah, you got to be really careful. Thank you, Graves, for that prime sub. Thank you. Coridon. Moon. Fluttermane. Fluttermane, I'm at three. But there's just to have more... Slitherwing. Just to have more ancient cards in the deck, really. Is that 60? It's 59 cards. I'm one card short. It's a Radiant Greninja. That's it. How do I, let's see, can I just, there we go. Yeah, this is kind of where I'm at right now, but you can sort. Wow. 
Wow. That's a lot of energy. You need the energy. I find myself rotting like two energy back into the deck every game. A pal pad would probably be good because I do find myself in situations where like if I have to waste a Sada, then like I'm I'm in like a very dire situation at the end of the game. Or like if I if if on the turns that I play Sada, I feel like I have to Sada for two and get an attachment. Or like I have to Sada for one and get an attachment. Like you have to be very careful. Yeah. Very careful. How many ancient cards do I have? Let's see. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Yeah, 30. So I'm saying with 30, dude, with 30 ancient cards, your max is 360. So, like, you've got some wiggle room there. You could do 330 pretty easily. Now, I feel like... I don't know. I'm going to have to test the deck more to, like, kind of feel what it does. But it, the deck has, like, some nat some really natural strengths. Like, it's very good against Lost Box. It's very good against decks like Chen Pal, right? Is Cabalion not worth... So here's my beef with Cabalion. Is this list with 30 ancient cards in it can hit 330, right? If you play Cabalion, then you got to play Switch, right? So it's like you're, you're taking out... I mean, and you could, but you could also just lose the game. Your opponent gusts up Cabalion like... At the end of the game, you'll find that your deck has barely any resources in it. Like, your deck has almost nothing left in it. It usually has the exact amount of cards you need to win the game, right? Defiance Band has seemed fine, but again, like, Defiance Band is one of those cards where if I see it off of Explorers, I'm discarding it almost every time, right? And I'm not getting a plus 10 boost for it. So it's like only two nest balls. Well, I want the third nest ball, but I took them out for. So the list started out like this: four ultra ball, or four nest ball, no ultra ball. And as I've been playing it, I've I've slowly been creeping ultra balls in here because be, being able to sometimes you get like uh, you get all your cards in your hand and you need to ultra ball them away. So it's like the ultra balls are really good. I definitely am confident that two ultra ball is like very good. But I do want like a third nest ball. I mean, you could go three nest ball, two artisan, but like, you know, the whatever it's like, what you need a vacuum for. Vacuum doesn't say ancient on it. Arcadia says, I played a bunch of Reggies. Two Ultra, two Nest was ideal. Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of like where I'm ending up. The Tusk, that's the thing. Is like If you're playing the Tusk, then you... He's got a retreat cost of three. Like, if you start him, you can't aggress at all, right? He's so fat. Whereas, like, Slitherwing at least is, like, putting on pressure and attacking, yeah. I mean, you could play it. I mean, the odds of starting it are relatively low. The shoes, I know, but the shoes are so good, dude. The shoes, man. The shoes are so good. I mean, because then you're getting on to like... It's 
if they don't knock it out, just keep milling them? Well, what's the tusk for? I mean, I suppose you could cut like one of these for a tusk. Like, sure, if you really, if you really like the tusk, yeah, knock yourself out. You know, like whatever, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Like two of these, two of these is fine. One of them, it's just an ancient card to put in the discard pile. You are not ever getting four energy on the tusk. We are not getting, no, no, no. We are not getting four energy on the tusk. Ain't no way. Thank you, JGD, for the prime sub. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not like totally sold on the Tusk. This guy seems like such a, a good lead versus Lost Box decks. I mean, that just sets you up for such an advantage, right? I could be convinced to take the shoes out, but... I would have to be I would have to be convinced that the cards I was putting in are very high value. All right. Flamer your comment here is hurting my brain. You said there are so many four ofs in the deck, it would be hard to get what you need. Make that make sense for me. Because that's the opposite of what I would if a deck is a bunch of one ofs, how does that help you get what you need more than playing four ofs? Help me. Help me understand you. Help me. <laughs> please, please help. I'm trying. I've read your comment twice. I ignored it the first time because I was like, I can't make it make sense. I'm going to just ignore it. But the second time, now I'm stuck. Now I'm stuck. The second time, you doubled down on it, so now I'm going to address it. Make it make sense for me. How is it hard to find what you need if you've got lots of four ofs? That should make it easier to find the cards you need because there's four of them. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't understand what you're trying to say here. So what you're trying to say is that you're going to draw too many of the same cards? Nah, you really want, you need four vessels, you need four, I mean, that's the thing, is this, the, the main attacker in this deck does more damage for the amount of ancient cards in the discard pile, so you just gotta play four of them, right? That, I mean, that is, that is just the nature of the deck, because your main attacker is this roaring moon at the end of the game, you want to be doing 280, 300 damage with it, right? So, like, you have to play, you just have to, like, play these chunky... I've really loved the Artisans. If you bumped it up to four Nest Ball, I mean, you could play Pokestop. I would worry about, you know, discarding Sada. You do have gear. I mean, it's certainly a possibility. I'm not, like, totally opposed to it, but then you it feels like you'd have to boost up your recovery. If you're playing a more reckless card, like, like Stop, like, having actually... Like when you get into the games with the deck, like I said, at the end of the game, you are you are very much down to like the final energy, the final sada, the final resource. Like you are, you are, you are down to the the final resources in your deck. And playing a 
playing a card like stop feels like it would be a little bit introducing like a little bit too much too much chaos into it It does feel like almost every time you use Artisan, you're like, that's, it's, it's so good. You just want to like get your guys out. Switch, Switch is one of those cards. I'm going to discard it off Explorer every time. But I guess I would discard Trekking Shoes off Explorer as well because it's not actually a card that does anything. But Trekking Shoes helps you to dig to like put your... Like hitting an ancient Pokemon off of Trekking Shoes feels so good. If you put in stops, you could definitely take the shoes out. That is like a space saver. So like you could go like minus that. You could go minus that. You could go stops, right? You know, at least three, four stops. You put in the four nest balls. But then you're going to need probably a second rod. Or you're going to need a pal pad. Probably something like that. And then you could probably go one Ultra Ball. Something like that, right? No, it doesn't save space. It just is different, right? One less fighting. I feel like with the Slitherwing, you kind of... I mean, I guess you play the four, four of them vessels, so that's fine. You could go one less fighting. You can save a spot there. You can go 6-3. That's probably... That's probably fine. You probably want like... The stops feel so reckless on the supporters though. So I, w I would feel like I'd want... Yeah, Slither Wings for Iron Hands, yeah. Luminous? No, you don't need Luminous. This could be... I am interested in testing this out, though. So I'll definitely... I'm going to give the stops a try and kind of see where they... what they feel like. Yeah, you don't need Luminous. Plus, you've got four vessels. So, like, energy fixing isn't a problem because you've got four vessels. So you're always finding the right energy that you need. Drum usually draws three, from my experience. But an ancient item that draws three, that's still broken. Yeah, usually I draw, I, I'll, I'll admit it. I was thinking about Prime Catcher. You could play Prime Catcher. But the draw three with drum is usually, it's nuts. But I could definitely see Prime. And if you play Prime Catcher, then you don't have to play a Switch, and you save one spot here. Right? So then you're like, okay, well then I can bump up to a fourth one of these guys, and now look at us. Right? So like that actually does save some space. Drum does add to your damage output, which is why I would want to put another Ancient card in. If you run one vacuum to remove Greninja, oh, run the vacuum to like, I feel like you're just going to get like this guy stuck in the active though. And then you're, oh, but I guess he can't be blocked. That's hilarious. What vacuum away your Greninja out of your hand? Explorers the main out to adding ancients to this card pile. Well, 
and I guess you have stops, you know, you have previously I had shoes. I mean, there's like, and then I, I do think you probably just want two ultra balls in the deck. Right. Maximum belt. If you're playing maximum belt, then you definitely don't want to play poker stops. You would be playing artisans instead. Maybe the shoes are trash. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being enlightened. Maybe the shoes are not the way. For flood, it's just to put the thing in the discard pile. You guys realize Night March used to play Lampin, right? <laughs> <laughs> You realize we used to play this guy, all right? This guy. He only had one job. <laughs> to get his butt into the discard pile. Uh, starting with this guy is actually really good in quite a few matchups. Even making it so that your opponent can't like Arceus V-Star is pretty crazy in the active. I think three is probably correct, but I'm just like, it doesn't bother me to play four. I mean, you're just going to be discarding them. You know, it's fine. I could also see two. I mean, it's like, it's it's fine. It's just a guy who ends up with a discard pile. It doesn't really bother me, I guess. And because it reminds me of like, it's just a damage booster is the way I think of it. A damage booster who has like a nice other kind of like use. How about Big Moon is a one of? I don't like Big Moon is a one of because then you got to play Dark Patch. Dark Patch isn't a uh, ancient. I don't really think that you really need Dark Patch. But yeah, there's certainly a lot to think about there. The new set should come out on TCG Live next Thursday. Unfortunately, I realize that I'm going to Vancouver, so funny enough, Azul is also probably going to be at Vancouver, so. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think either either of us over maybe Azul will be there on this Thursday but then like on Friday we're probably both going to be in Vancouver so like I don't think I don't think either of us are going to be on on Twitch on release day which is pretty funny thank you Ryan for the seven the 49 months Which little B short should you order? Yo. I got the down in Ohio one. Let's see. The base world. He's got some good options here. Let's see. If you're at the base world, yeah, this one's good. I have this one right here, the swag like Ohio T-shirt. Yeah, I've got this one, but this blue one's pretty sick too, honestly. I don't know. Do people in do people in Europe know about Ohio? Why hate? This one's good. Yeah, why hate? That's a good one. 
people in, <laughs> people in Europe know about Ohio. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think this pink one's good. The blue one. Yeah, the blue one. This is this one goes crazy for sure. Yeah, thank you JD for the gifted sub. I appreciate it. Oh, this one, the the This one's sick. Ah, uh, they only have it in double XL. Yeah. You thought Ohio wasn't real? You're right. Ohio is just a state of mind. <laughs> thought Ohio wasn't real. I feel like I might as well just enjoy the final week of mindless roaring moon gameplay on the TCG live before this deck rotates like every other deck I'll I'll still be playing post other than guardy too but I'm not a real guardy head so Moon doesn't rotate, but the Moltres does. Mew? Listen. Sometimes it's easier to let, let something go if you just pretend it never existed. <laughs> oh, I'm playing against Charizard. Dang, my opponent just got the. They just got that opening hand. They're just that guy. Oh, yeah. We're popping off. Well, let's go, baby. I think I prized my Morpeko. I do believe. Yeah. Can I have to give her to that? Okay. So we're looking at... I need to get another darkness energy into the discard pile. That would be great. I'd also love to hit a Pokemon catcher. That'd be fantastic. Okay. Just gonna squawk all this away. Kaka. All righty then.
earthen vessel. Get some darkness energy. Poke stop. You guys feeling the Pokemon catcher, the Rotom play? Like, is that what we're vibing with? Is that what we're kind of... Is that... Is that the rush we're chasing here? You guys want to go? Come on! All right. <laughs> I've missed two. What are the odds that we miss another? No way, right? There's no way you miss another. Yeah, we rip this every time. Nah, you never miss three in a row. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. See? <laughs> that's, that's math. That's just math, baby. <laughs> yeah. That's just mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> we lose Moltres so Moltres did his job I've got Sada energy switch we're chilling and then I go gouge Gouge, gouge game. That's the... I just now... And that's exactly what why this deck is playing four catchers, right? Because you're trying to just win the prize race. That's all Roaring Moon wants to do is just win the prize race. Right? So you want to start off by taking two, and then you go four, six, and that's it. And you want to be the first person to take two. And that's why you play the four Pokemon catchers. Makes it easier to be the first person to take two prizes. All right. Is that an Entei I saw? Oh, yes, it was. Well, they're going Magma Base and Entei. I mean... Okay. Magma Base and Charizard, that was not a play I was expecting. I guess. Burkini Charizard. Uh huh. Burning darkness. Got it. Goodbye, sir. Now I got to keep my hands. So that was very good. Love drawing into battle VIP pass. Just fantastic. Yeah, I love my battle VIP passes. Okay, I had to get a vessel. Let's see what I got. Last darkness energy in the deck. There are two dark patch, two energy switch. Okay, I would love I would love to see. It almost feels like a don't, don't, don't do that kind of situation. Yeah, I think I have to like 
keep this darkness energy to attach next turn, right? I've got two dark patch. I guess I have two dark patch of the deck. I want to find them. But I think it's better to keep the darkness energy than it is to conceal cards. 100%. Okay, so. Gouch. So you do that. And then I just got to, you know, win next turn. Okay. There's another dark patch. I got three dark patch in the deck. Three. This is pretty good. I own out of two, but I know there's two dark patch in that deck. Yeah. That's ugly. It's fine, because, all right, the poke stop. Well, hopefully, I don't discard my poke stop. Yeah, well, with that vacuum, they're probably going to do just that. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? That poke stops probably out of here, isn't that? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Unfortunate. Well, with no energy in play, if I, with no energy in play, I cannot burn these energy switch and I cannot draw off Mew, which is just bad. I last prized Moltres, so I can't get a Moltres out. So I need to top deck a dark patch or a a dark patch or something so that I can play my hand down to draw with Mew. They might retreat into this Charizard. Yup, it's going to make my life a little bit harder. I do have a Pokemon catcher in the deck still. But, uh, yes, you are making my life more difficult, which is not cool, man. I want my deck. I want my life to be easy, not difficult. Poke stop top deck. I think we have to play it. Goodness gracious. All right. Dark Patch. Energy Switch. Energy Switch. Restart for three. Man. Probably just lose here. Not great. That Iono was quite bad. Ultra Ball for Dedene GX in game. Goodness. Or Crobat V. Remember the days? They need Switch Boss to win. Well, there goes the boss. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Nope. Here's the boss. Really? Like that? All right. Well, I get to see my final cards. So let's let's do this thing. P 
Pokemon catcher for game? Yes or no? Will we hit it? Just give it to me. Okay. The last card in my deck is boss and I can't no oh they just found a rod I know they have it I can restart I already saw it Yeah, I just lose. Dang. Can't pass because then they'll actually be able to attack. Give him more Peko. If I give him more Peko, I can't attack. Because I'm out of energy. This matchup doesn't feel good. I didn't ultra I concealed cards to find the catcher. I could have just... I could have Pokestopped to get the... Uh... Maybe we should just play Mew. So I could have, I top deck Sada, right? And I was like, all right, Sada allows me to guaranteed see my final cards in deck. I guess, and I knew I had one darkness energy in deck. I could have ultra balled the Sada away and been like, all right, I need to restart into dark boss for game. I mean, sure. Out of six cards, I need to find a two-card combo out of six cards, or I guarantee myself a 50% chance of win. Boss was the last card in deck, uh-huh. But I guess if I Ultra Ball, I, I rearrange it, right? So the line I took, I knew I gave myself a 50% chance of winning. But if I Ultra Ball away the Sada, I force myself to have to find the dark. I did not have two dark patches. I had one. I think. Right? Pretty sure it was one. How many cards were in the deck pre-Sada? Six. So either I'm drawing three and needing to hit a two card combo out of six, or I have a 50% chance guaranteed with stop and Sada. So I took the 50% chance.
stop sod has a slightly higher odds than the ultra ball play? I think so. Because you're saying I'm you're saying out of this ultra ball off this this restart for three, I have to hit two perfect cards out of six for a draw for three? That seems like less than a 50% chance. Right? I mean, it just does. I mean, that game we really got... Off the Ultra Ball play. Oh, I did only need to hit... I needed to hit Dark and one of either Boss or Catcher. But the, and then, the, then the Catcher is 50% chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Cool matchup. Maybe I dunk. Nope. All right, I'll see how we do. All right, we're probably just not putting any of those guys down, and we're just going to say, like, attackers only. Man... I should have just discarded that. It's fine. Yeah, I should have just discarded it. Do you just have to, like, put your other guys down in this matchup? I think maybe you do, right? You just have to go squawk and Well, obviously you don't want to discard switch, but like what are we gonna do? Just sit here draw passing? I think like the idea is you're trying to run them off the table. And you have like four catchers and a boss and yeah. So I think you kind of like have to put your other guys down. I don't like it. But it feels like it feels like kind of have to. Yeah, I think we're just like kind of going all in and saying like, all right, yup. Trying to just draw as many cards as I can. KO the Rotom. Okay. Need a dark patch. Or else I'm not doing much. Three energy switch won't do. Perfect. <laughs> Just, just wonderful. Mm. Yeah. Great. I think Moon kind of stinks, bro. 
Guaranteed loss now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know, but all my friends tell me to play Moon. They all tell me to play it, but it feels like it has no good matchups. That's my beef. And the next card, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I know. My friends all tell me to play Moon. It's so sad. All right, Rotom's back out. You're saying there's a chance, though. With Rotom back, we can do it. I got one switch card. Yup, Squawkabilly. All right. Pokestop. I think I should just chill. Time to motivate. So true. A Mew is fine. I got two Dark Patch in the hand, so I'm like, what, you know, I might as well put them on Mew, I guess. It gives me, like, another option. I got the Double Dark Patch. I should probably just use the Double Dark Patch now. I probably want Misfortune Sisters or something, which is annoying. I've got Pal Pad, so like if I if I get any cards that allow me to see cards off the top of the deck. Yeah, they're gonna go catcher. So cringe. All right. Yeah, they got a catcher. Hate to see that. That hurts. I do need. Okay, so now we can go here. Dark patch. Dark patch. Sure. Pal pad back in. Boss. Judge? Yeah. Star Alchemy. For Boss. Boss Rotom.
Tree Tier. Dire Flying Wings. Energy Switch. Aura Burn for Knockout. I don't think I have quite enough juice in the tank to finish this one out. Unfortunately, I think I will get down to my final prize. I mean, we're like right there, right? Right there at the finish line. But not having, uh, not hitting, I think I can do it if I hit the Pokemon Catcher off that prize. Or if I hit the Pokemon Catcher off my last prize. But I have to hit the Pokemon Catcher because I have one more Catcher left in deck, right? In in my prizes. So I have to hit it off of this. Or judge them into no Counter Catcher. One or the other, right? So, let's hope for the best. And we Calamity Storm discard the stop so that they can't use it. And we say, hope you brick, baby. Catcher, 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 catcher. Come on. All right. Erica's invitation. Okay. I don't know. Come on, dude. No counter catcher. So you're saying. Let's freaking go, dude. That's right. Who told me to scoop? Who said I was done? Who said? <laughs> yes we got there let's go I'm not gonna lie though Stevie it did look bad it was looking grim it was looking rough out here Yeah, it was definitely looking looking Ugo. But if your opponent's gonna put down Rotom twice, all right. There's always a chance if they do that. The thing about Roaring Moon is that if they've got non Snorlax Pokemon in play, all of your catchers and your bosses are also switch outs, right? Because you can just retreat. So there's always that. Right, let's see what my opponent's got going on. Battle VIP. It's a lost box deck. Lost Tina? I feel like I've been seeing a lot of non Tina lost zone decks lately. Psychic water, it's Tina. All right. I can do this. We can definitely do this. I got rid of vacuum. 
maybe to keep the cram. And this is a really awesome opening hand. Wow, I mean, they don't make opening hands like this anymore, folks. We want Radiant Greninja, and we want a Free Retreater, and we want Squawk. Why? Why? It's got to be those two. And then concealed cards. Yeah, it's got to be those two. And there we go. Now we're chilling. And then we're getting rid of the boss, and we can get rid of the darkness energy too. Wow, we really want Galarian Moltres, you know? Dang, that's crazy. Could be Mew. If I just get Mew and I go, yeah, Mew is fine. There'll be other energy switches. All right. Go. Or Petco. Go Mew. Just gotta say, with confidence, I am getting it. Sick. Okay. We want energy in the discard pile. Two energy in the discard pile is really good, so we'll squawk those away. All right. Dang, this deck is so broken. All right. Bring him up, dude. That's right. This deck is so broken and so bad at the same time. How is it both? How is the deck broken and bad? Somebody, please help me. What a rush. I did. <laughs> All right, I'm fried, bro. <laughs> the stone, listen, he's supposed to be over here. All right. It's just it's on the wrong guy. <laughs> listen, this is what Roaring Moon does to your brain, dude. All right. This is just what Roaring Moon. This is your brain on moon. It's not it's not pretty. Imagine losing to an opponent who does this. Could you imagine? Doesn't that just feel terrible? Doesn't that just make you not want to play cards anymore? All right. Okay, well, Calamity Storm. It's cool, bro. I got, I got four seal stone number two in there somewhere. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get him with the next four seal stone for sure. For sure. I just misclicked. There it is. Yeah, we're chilling, bro. You guys are haters. Listen, I just meant to put it on the other darkness guy. You guys, you guys are, you're missing all the potential mind games in the Pokemon TCG, right? Yeah, but you put the four seal stone, <laughs> put the four seal stone on the moon. It makes your opponent question everything. They start punching drywall and going into fits of rage. I can't lose to this guy.
I paused as I was placing it, thought about it, then put it on anyway. I, honest to goodness, I thought I was putting it on the Glarian Moltres. I just, I thought I would, obviously that card doesn't go on Moon. I, I know that. I've been playing this deck for day, or, you know, weeks now. I mean, months, really. Ever since JW and Jesse have been hyping it, I've been trying to make this deck, I've been trying to fall in love with this deck. Azul says there's no such thing as bluffing. Mahone says misplayed a trick opponent. I confuse. Yes, I'm trolling. Azul is correct. I am joking. I'm going to spit my moon or not? Come on. Ah, let's go. Oh, yeah, you're ruined. Get those out of here. Thin. Concealed cards. Iono, even. Cool. I can just guarantee the knockout if I go get boss with my real four seal stone. The real seal stone. <laughs> <laughs> the real seal stone has arrived. Okay. Don't want to discard the boss off of a poke stop. That would be bad. So, boss in the deck, right? Should be. Should be. All right. Grab that, and then we'll use stop. That's fine. See if I find a catcher. Oh, boy, do I. But you see, like, yeah, yeah maybe it's correct to just do the stop first, but I, I've... But no, it's not correct to do the stop first, because if I do the stop first and I hit the boss but miss the catcher, right, then I don't have the play at all. So it's always correct to it's always correct to go fish out the boss first, right? Because I could just miss the play entirely. Right? I think so. Yeah. That's so sick. All right. Yeah, you need the guarantee play. We have to we have to guarantee it. So we have to do this. Probably fine. Yo, what if I put the energy on Mew and I go for the... We probably just want to be taking knockouts next turn. So yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll just make sure that that's over there. That's fine. Attached to Moltres. I was thinking about that. But this way, I'm like, threat if they put a Tina down, I'm threatening game next turn. I guess I'm, they can't, they can't answer this Roaring Moon, so I guess I'm threatening Tina, I'm threatening game next turn regardless. Never mind, so I take that back. Maybe the correct attachment's Mew, so that I am threatening game unless they put down a Manaphy next turn. But then I just, all my catchers are down though. So never mind. I'm not threatening any gust for the rest of the game. So I have to go I have to go knockout knockout game through the actives, whichever they are, which means it has to be moons, right? So the only correct attachments now are moons. I don't have palpad. Roxanne Countercatcher uh path. Yeah, how about how about that just doesn't happen? Right. Yeah, let's not do let's not do that. Yeah, splitting the energy one one on Moltres and Moon is probably fine, right? Because then we can retreat with an energy. Well, 
Or how about we simply draw out of it? Someone earlier said that Twin Leaf was announced. Is that true, or was like is coming out, or is actually happening? Is is what you what you guys got on that? Oh, yeah. We're chilling. Sure. Nope. No interest in playing that card. Yeah, it should just be... More or less checkmate here. There's nothing else that I really need to do. Is it worth it for a returning player to start building new decks right now or just wait until rotation? You can start building new decks right now that will be uh, relevant still uh, with rotation. The decks that I would suggest you start building would be Chen Pao, Vax Caliber, Golden Go EX, and Charizard, and Lost Zone Giratina. If you're talking about on live, sure, yeah, go ahead, start building the decks. Like, you know, and, you know, you'll have to switch up a handful of cards with rotation on live, like, next week. I mean, it literally is in, like, six days. But you'll have the cores built already, and it's probably fine. Like, if you want to play for the next week, uh, it's not going to be that big of a deal. You'll have to take out your battle VIP passes. You'll have to put in Buddy Buddy Poffins. Like, basically that. If you're buying cards for IRL, wait. <laughs> Absolutely. Wait, wait. Yes. Because you, you don't want to buy a Battle VIP Pass right now. That would be silly. Because that card is rotating very soon. play online at the moment yeah 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 yeah. i think it's a cool time to get started just don't like don't invest into a deck like mu v max right now that deck the entire mu v max decks like rotates right so don't don't do that um i think i say like i don't want to give my opponent stop I'm kind of like assuming that they're playing a, a turbo deck. Yeah, I think I kind of just chill here. Nice, we got some more people who plan to start playing post-rotation. Yeah, it's always an exciting time to get started. Man, my opponent doesn't have squat going on. Love it. Uh, as far as energy switches go, I have two energy switch, one switch card in deck, so it's more likely that I find 
energy switch, then switch cart. But then there's also a possibility I find dark patch. But I've got two energy in the discard pile, so that's still correct to put those two energy there. I could find dark patch, dark patch. Okay. And we're going to go here. Boo. Oh, come on now. Sure. There we go. Come on. There we go. Yeah, give me this guy. Yeah, come on, come on up. Very good. Do I not have Moltres in play? I do not. Okay, that should be GG's. Discard the stadium. I don't want them drawing any cards. What's the coolest single prize deck at the moment? Market dimly lit. I really like it when uh, international and uh, in Japanese release late release dates align closely. Yes, the best single prize deck right now post rotation. So next week will probably be. I mean, there's if if you're talking like Lost Zone Charizard, I guess, or Dino Box are probably the two. Yeah, Teal of Fortune, I don't think that deck is bad. I mean, really, you're taking some pretty big knockouts. They said the coolest single prize deck? Dino Box. I've done a full 180 on Dino Box. Dino Box is so cool. <laughs> you know how cool Karidon is? He's dragon type. Full 180 degree swing on it. Shameless 180 degree pivot. Bramblegast? Gotta love that lukewarm, mostly cold room temperature. Get go coffee. Mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's tasty. All right. Wow, you just filled your bench and you're gonna serve me up this, really? You just filled the bench, and you're going to give me Raikou. Cool. All right. Sure. No squawker. That's why I don't need it, bro. I don't even need the squawker. For real, for real. Okay. Conceal those cards. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get it. All right, I want to blast this Raikou to smithereens. That's what we want to do. We just want to...
blast it. I don't have a switch card yet. If I go energy switch, it's tough. I think I should probably get Mew and then Pokestop, and then we'll kind of see where we go from there. That's fine. I don't want to discard the Mew off the Pokestop. Finding the switch cart's really big. Okay, so now we have it guaranteed. Guaranteed, we've got it. Ding, 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 we have a winner. Dire Flame Wings. I will say the Roaring Moon deck is like really fun to just play on TCG Live because it is just like a little sequencing puzzle, right? You're like trying to figure out what the best sequencing route is. We don't need to use our power yet. Star Alchemy. I don't really want to get rid of any of these cards. If I'm being honest. But I should probably just play research. So let's just V-Star for that. I didn't play a supporter yet. Nah. I don't think so. I didn't Sada. Nah. I could judge him. No, no, no. We'll research. I just want to set up more guys. I mean, at this point, it's a race, right? So, Did I? No, I didn't. Okay, I was tripping. Okay. I'd really love it if you just gave me one more moon deck. Can you just do me a solid in that regard? Get me one more roaring moon. One more battle VIP pass. That'd be sick. Come on. Thank you. Deck was like, heard, buddy. Got you. Got you, homie. Yes. Don't you worry about that. Okay. That's fine. We'll take out the right game. Okay. Three energy on Murad on the X. They do take the knockouts. Uh, I need to respond. We get Iono. I've got energy attached to Roaring Moon and energy switch. But I need to find a dark patch or something. In order to get that fully powered up. I probably should have just pal pad the Sadas back into the deck last turn, but I forgot that I discarded both of them, so... No, when I when I originally looked at my hand, I couldn't tell that the research was glowing. That's why I was I was nervous for a second, but then I saw that the research was indeed glowing, so that's fine. Can always check the log. It's true. No, you didn't you didn't whiff it. No, not like this, dude. No, you can't just just whiff it. Not like that. Man. Dang, this is crazy. Did you win the stadium, bro?
Okay. Cool. Dang. Yeah, Moon Moon feeling kind of schnasty when all it has to do is knock out Maridons. Do I think Maridon or Moon is better post rotation? That's interesting because neither of them are great. It's probably Moon is better. Nice. I get the Dawn matchup again. Neither of them love rotation. Moon is better, but neither of them are like thriving post rotation. Yeah, this is the best coin on the client, by the way. I don't I don't think it's close. Do you guys you're giving me the thumbs down? I'm giving you <laughs> Bro, I'm giving you the thumbs up. Yeah, we're buds now. Okay, so we're going first. I do actually kind of want to see more Pokemon. I guess I could just squawk, though, if I want to, and just get out of this completely. I would like, like, one more Pokemon, I think. I'll do this. Not a lot of energy in that deck, actually. We'll be a little bit careful. Squawk's in the deck. Mew, Moon. No, uh, no more Peko, though, unfortunately. You think they're going to Iron Hands my Greninja? Probably. What's better, to force... What's better, force the, uh, dang, this is just getting terrible. I really just wanted another Pokemon. But I guess at this point, I don't have to put down Squawk. I can just go get these guys and say, all right, I've got, I can just go get two moons, kind of call it a day. Let's say I'll saw it on next turn. That's okay. It's fine. Sure. I guess you want to force them to hands. Hands is harder than a ride on with a Zapdos. Got a lot of energy in the discard pile. That's why I decided to hold on to the Sada. It's like I don't have a lot of energy in the deck. Apparently on Limitless in the last 100 City League wins, Moon has two and Maridon has one. Truly a battle of the mediocre. <laughs> yeah. It's not great numbers. I'm going to be honest. Yo, where's your full art peony? You're slipping. You've got gold balls and a <laughs> and a gold and a full art research, but yo, no peony to go with the with the gold balls. What the heck? Generator. Dang, dude, my opponent's goaded with the sauce. I am bodied. <laughs> uh. 
This is looking brutal, I'm not going to lie. Okay. I need my one of Iono stat. Yeah, I'll take that, sure. Tails. Looks like I got a gouge. Okay. Tough one. Espartha has two wins. Tying Moon. Espartha. Espathra. I just need a four seal stone. Come on. Come on. Four seal stone. Wait, did my opponent prize Zapdos? You're saying there's a chance? Oh, there's certainly a chance. They could just whiff it. Oh, yeah, you're bodied. Just scoop up your cards. It's over. Collapsed. Yeah, yeah, you ain't got it. Restart for one. You ain't got it. That's not a Flaffy. That's not a generator. Pass. That's right. My turn. Oh, how the turns have tabled. I don't have any dark in the discard pile. That's crazy. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay. All right, so we go retreat. Dark patch. Lu lu lu, roaring moon. Lu lu lu. <laughs> Calamity storm. No. No. Okay. It's fine. So far, they have not revealed Zapdos, so maybe Zapdos is priced. If you tandem unit for the Zapdos right here, I'm extremely confused. Because you didn't get it out last turn. Nah, nah, you prized your Zapdos. Yeah, quit playing with me. Nest ball for Zapdos. No, all right, all right. There's no Zapdos. No Zapdos. Ultra ball for Zapdos. No, there's no Zapdos. There's no Zapdos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zapdos is on the bench. Not that Zapdos. The one that gets my opponent this knockout. The problem is, though, in order to take this knockout, I have to gouge. 
which means that I would knock myself out. Which is not what I want to do. Also, oh man, I got to look out for that multi-shot. They can multi-shot for four prizes in game. I do need to look out for that. So that's a tough one. Yeah. Okay. So what are we doing here? New moon. Restart. I've got one play. But wait. Ah, I can't, bro. Because they discarded the stadium. I don't have it. Man. But they just go Zapdos for game. Maybe they don't have an energy. I think I just have to say, like, you don't have the energy. If I had one more energy, I could attack with Moltres here, but I just don't. Oh, man, this stinks. Maybe they don't have it. Yeah, you just have to hope they don't have an energy. Yep. Not great. Oh, they got the energy. I'm toast. Thumbs up, man. This is a cool play. GG's. You got me. Dang. Gouging Zapdos and sending up the Fresh Moon. That... That was probably the play, actually. Yeah. Right? Well, no, because then they still... No, no, because they just need energy. They still just attack... Oh, we gouge the Zapdos and set up the Fresh Moon. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the play, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then they need, like, Boss to win. Yeah. For sure. That makes sense. Am I taking Moon to Vancouver? I mean, it's a deck that I'm considering. I also like Chen Pao and Mew. That's probably my short list right now. Moon is nice because it's like you kind of get to go ham, you know? There's some comfort in that. This matchup is atrocious. Can we win this matchup? Yeah, Mucho for sure. B tier decks win regionals all the time. Guys, remember when Eternatus V Max won a regional? Yeah, happens all the time. That was a C tier deck. See? Case in point. 
Oh, Eternatus VMAX definitely won a regional. Yup. Like two years ago. Or like a year and a half ago. Oh, there's my one artisan target. We'll spin the stop now. I got pow pad in case I want to. Yep. Cool. Love that. I meant to, no, I wanted to discard that energy 100%. That's my bad. Doesn't really matter. Luckily. But yes, I should have discarded that energy because then I could dark patch and I have the guaranteed attack here. Right. And here, if I don't find an energy switch or the equivalent if I don't find energy switch or switch off of this then I do miss the attack so yeah that I should not have attached that energy that was a brain fart thrilling man yeah that's just my bad Zatu's weak to dark, so that's nice. Spathra has the ability Dazzling Gaze. Your tax cost colorless more. It's just terrible. And it can like very easily one hit KO your moons. It's very bad for us. The whole situation's bad. But, I mean, they can't knock out Squawkabilly, so that's nice. Squawkabilly kind of thick, honestly. He's holding down the house. They could poke it for like 30. Pokemon League headquarters, you're really trying to annoy me, huh? Okay, stops are painful. I think we should probably try to catch up the Zaw too. Yeah, and get these energy off the Morpeko. That's that's fine. That way they don't have any draw either. I'm only offering up this single prizer, which is fine. I get to move my energy back. The wheel. Don't want to Iona them. So just do that. What am I saying? Both energy to moon? That just seems terrible, but I guess so. It makes it so I need four. Kind of yikes. Research. No, I needed you to keep dead drawing. No. All right. I would like another cyball. You don't. Oh, you do knock me out. Oh, this is terrible. Okay. I guess I just have to go. Four energies? 
that's what this is going to take. This is disastrous. Okay. Last dark in the deck. Two dark patch, two energy switch. Concealed cards. Really want Sada. That's what we want. As much as I'd like Diano, it doesn't really matter what my opponent does. I just need to do my own thing and make sure that I have enough energy in play. So that's fine. Do that. Right. Dark patch. Just an exhausting task getting all of these energy in play. Oh, there's only four cards left in my deck, so I'm going to have to pump the brakes here for a, <laughs> so, a quick little second. Yeah, stop, stop, Andrew. Just, just stop. Okay, it's fine. Gouge. So then what? I need to switch card. There's another moon. Okay. I cannot play Sato. I should have one more dark patch, though. They're going to Iono. Trust. Trust, trust, trust. Or I just send up Squawk and I can motivate. We're chilling. This Spothra deck is not good. I know, because we spent many streams playing it. All them Ionos. You're telling me you're not going to Iono me? <laughs> What the? It's crazy. All right, 360 damage to my Roaring Moon. Fine. Well, I got three cards left in deck. You think they got a boss in their hand? I haven't got a boss, bro. Okay. Catcher. Catcher. Oh. I can't even motivate. I have to go gouge. That's fine. I have to go gouge and then gust, but I can't I can't boss. Because I have no boss left. And my pad is down. Four catchers pad and boss all down. Yes, I cannot possibly gouge twice for game. I do not think that there's an, there's not enough gas in the tank. No, yeah, this matchup's just that bad, you know. Sudden death. I mean, I can't. There's not enough cards in the deck to do it, you know? The fact that I have to do these four energy gouges every time, if I had hit one of those catchers, then I could do it. I'm gonna be able to get a three energy moon. 
but I can't get a four energy moon, I don't think. Unless there's one more energy switch. There's not. Yeah. That's just... Having to turn out these four energy moons is just so... Impossible. We're one energy short. Yep. And we cannot do it. Sad. Dang, bro. We almost had it. I think, I mean, I did misplay turn one. I I could have attacked with the more Peko turn one had I not misplayed. So that's that's on me. I'm just playing a little sloppy right now. We definitely could have still done that. The Aspartha deck is not not super real. Maridon is not very good post rotation. It dies. Maridon's dead. There is no more dawn. The dawn is done. Yes. Serena and fire energy, huh? Okay. What plays Serena and Fire Energy? Is it it's gotta be Ente Valiant, right? I think. Yeah. Ente Valiant. Oh yeah. All right. This matchup seems pretty good. Well, especially since I'm going second. I guess it'd be feeling a little bit different if I went first, but... They'll reprint Dynamo in about two years? I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, it, there was... Uh, there's been a bunch of dynamite or like abilities across the years. I, I definitely think that it's only a matter of time before they print another dynamite or like. Definitely. I mean, what type do you think is going to get dynamite or next though? We've had lightning, we've had metal, we've had psychic, and we've had lightning again. No, not spirit tomb. You sick. Sick person. A grass? Grass dynamoter? All right. Game on. Really wish I could use this energy switch to power up my guy. But no. No, you said. I need a free retreater. I can dark patch, attach, and then I can switch cart. So that's like probably fine. And I won't need a free retreater yet, so. I guess I do need dark. Hmm. I can't energy switch. Well, let's see. These energy switches are useless. Because of that dang spirit tomb, which 
which is really cramping my vibe here. Let's get a free retreater. Mew. But I don't want to go too wide, but I guess I do need a free retreater, so. You don't want more Pekka, we'll get Mew. All right, so I need a second dark patch and an attachment. VIP pass. I mean, I guess I guess I just am saying that I'm going all out. Which is not great because then if I miss the attack means that my opponent just has the opportunity to get the knockout on me. Um, got a darkness already in hand. We got one energy in the discard pile. I just need to find... Yeah, we'll, we'll take that. It's fine. This whole thing just gets a lot more difficult without energy switch, huh? All of it, really. Oh, can't I conceal? I can conceal, you're right. But I'm going to mew. I'm trying to mew first, I think. Yeah, probably. I should have gotten the second energy there, though. It's not glowing, I know. So sick, dude. All four catchers. How about that? I think we just go Sada's Vitality. That way I don't have to actually get rid of any cards. Because I haven't played a supporter yet, right? Did I research? No, I discarded that. Off stop. Yeah. So we'll do that. That way I can keep my catchers too. That's good. Now I can conceal it. Excellent. Dark patch. And we're just feeling pretty good about this now. Okay. It buffed out. We got there, but that spear tomb was quite annoying to have to deal with. But we should be doing okay now, just since we were able to get the first two prize knockouts. Uh, getting to use Sada as my supporter turn one for two really helped the lack of uh, Dire Flame Wings situation because of the spear tomb. If I was going to have to get rid of those final two catchers, that would have been bad. Because eventually they will send up this Radiant Charizard and I will have to deal with it. And I don't really want to. Did my opponent disconnect? Nope. They're right here. Maybe they got a double turbo energy in their hand. That's probably what they're doing. And they can go try to force the Radiant Charizard this turn. Yes, of course. Tried the Dual Mats Blick. They are awesome. I love them. Got rope, and I can just send up my Greninja. Which is 
fine. And they got nothing. Great. We're in there. That should just be good game or less, but it ain't over. If I hit one of these catchers, then it's starting to feel that way. Yes, yes, sir. I'm going to bring up this guy. And this should do it. Research. He can wear the stone. Pokestop. Energy switch. Pal pad. We put, honestly, I don't even need any of those. Put Sada back into the deck and a research, or just in case I want to find them off of an Iono or something. And then, like, what else do I even need? Like, we're chilling. Another Charizard can take a knockout. But I've got double Dark Patch Moon. Yeah, what kind of sleeves are you using there, Blake? <laughs> Were you typing with your feet? <laughs> like, Are you typing with your... <laughs> oh, I see what you were doing while you were typing. It's right there in the message. There we go. No, I love... The non-glares are my favorite sleeves that uh, Dragon Shield produces. The non-glare mats are amazing. Oh, I guess that's a misplay on my part because I should be powering up this Glaring Moltres so I can hit this. All right, because if I gouge this, like theoretically you could yoga loop me and then win, right? So like I don't want to gouge it. But what's my stadium count looking like? There's three. There should be one left. Yes, I am misplaying. That's fine. There's an energy switch and a stadium left, so I could hit either of those and then energy. Cool. That should be GG's then. But yes, the safer route would have been to be loading up the Moltres instead of the Moon here because then if I needed to, I could have retreated into the Moltres and taken the knockout, and the major thing is I don't want to leave my board vulnerable to a Yoga Loop play. <clears throat> Alright, and that'd be bad. And we just got one prize left. I've got a Sada and an energy switch, so I should be able to just gouge whatever I want for game. I think I'm pretty much just cruising. Yeah. 
Got their V-Star power, but they've already played Zinnias as their support for turn. GG's. All right. That's going to do it for the stream, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out today. I appreciate it. It's been a fun one. I wanted to stream long today since I had to do my taxes yesterday. It took like four hours. I mean, it took all day. So had to do those. I guess I should collect all my rewards, huh? I'll be back on Monday with some more Pokemon TCG action going on and work on some videos that I need to get processed and edited up. Next week, we'll figure out something to do on Tuesday while TCG Live is down. You know, maybe we'll work on building post-rotation decks, kind of theory crafting, stuff like that. Maybe I'll get somebody to come out for tabletop. I'll uh, I'll figure it out. But regardless, we will have stuff to do. I am heading to Vancouver next week, so I am going to be missing the set drop on TCG Live. But I'll be here the week after, so we'll have we'll have plenty of time. All right, y'all have a good one. Take it easy, all right? Goodbye.